Hello and welcome to the Zachariah Adil podcast. My guest today has been hailed as the best Indian dancer in Great Britain uh, by Dance Europe. Uh, he's been listed as one of the top 20 dancers in the world on Wiki Answers and has been featured on numerous TV shows and in stage productions in the UK where he displays his unique dance artistry. He's also been seen on the UK version of So You Think You Can Dance and Move Like Michael Jackson. And now I get to speak to him in person. Hello, Ash Mukherjee. Hello, Zach. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. All the better to see you. Oh, a lovely thing to say. Thank you for taking some time out of your day so you can speak to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I also, you know, right at the start of this, uh, this uh, interview conversation, uh, we, when we were communicating, we decided to dedicate this to the memory of Saroj Khan, who is a prolific uh, Bollywood choreographer who died on the 3rd of July uh, 2020 at the age of 71. She worked in the industry for over 60 years and choreographed over 2,000 numbers. Um, she, and she was a huge inspiration to me, just some of the numbers that she has choreographed uh, and some of the really old movies as well. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love her stories with, that she had with Sri Devi and so Sri Devi is my all-time favourite. So, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, how was she, did she inspire you as well? Yes, I think uh, uh, Saroj Khan, it's a bit like, it's like, it's like the, the, the big powerhouse um, of, of, of dance in India. It, it's, it's so, you know, her work is so much part of our fabric. It's like Lata Mangeshkar and Asha. Absolutely. And Saroj Khan, you know, it, 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 to me, it was like, um, I didn't even know that it was Saroj Khan. We were dancing, so, you know, um, so, so the dancers that we are and just the way we move, there are, um, you know, um, like my, my mom's an Indian classical singer and, there's, uh, and she said there was a particular song and there was, a, I, can't, I can't remember, I'm, just, I mean, I'm not very good at remembering sort of references sometimes, but I think it was Wahid Rahman and she, there was a song called Angadai or something. And in it, the way it was a very Saroj thing, like you were talking about, emo, you know, how um, how you one speaks like a dancer, and especially with with, with 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 Bollywood dance, especially if there is a lyric mm -hmm. and the director's there. I want this emotion to come across. And Saroj was it was like, well, the pinnacle of it, you know, to just get that point across in the most minimum dance move. And yeah. In that particular word, angrai, like that, 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 that going forth here and there. Oh my God, just gorgeous. You could just hear music when, you, when, when she moves, you know? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. yeah she was. And Wader yeah. Rahman was such a beautiful woman as well. Uh, and Sorry? Wader Rahman was also such a beautiful woman yeah. and a, a yeah. great, great dancer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about asking this question. So I had a question, which is going to come way later on, but I thought, as we're there, we, as you, you mentioned Wader Rahman, she's on my list. So I had a question, which is going to come later on, which was rank these Bollywood actresses in terms of their dance ability from one to 10. Right? <laughs> and Wader Rahman was one of them. So come on, uh, uh, rank her. Rank her from one to 10. So, from one to 10. So I've never worked with her. I've never met her. So um, I, I remember, I think the film was, was she? Uh, no. So who was in, there was an, uh, the, um, Vajanti Mala was in Guide, right? Um, no, no, no. Was, that was that was Vajanti Rahman in Guide. That was was Vajanti Mala. Yeah, Vajanti Rahman was. Oh no, Ju, uh, uh, yeah, Jewel Thief was 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 was. Um, Vajanti Mala. Vajanti Mala. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in Guide, there is this particular number that Vajanti does, and it's like, you know, mm. just heart stopping. Yeah. Um, so to me, I remember that, and to me, that's like one of the. Um, I just remember her the, the, the image of her. So if I, to me, I think she. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to class. <laughs> She's kind of like up there, like A plus for me, just for that number. No, no, come on, come on, come on. Give me. Okay, so based on that number, give me a, give me a ranking because I've got loads of other Bollywood actresses that, you, that I'm going to ask you as well. So just yeah, throw yeah. out a number for. I would, say, I would say a. So, I would. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, why did you ever watch this? I threw you straight into it, didn't I? I threw yeah, you straight oh in the deep end. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So I would I would say consider considering everybody else I would yeah. give her a just for that number alone give her a solid five out of ten as in no as in I uh, want to survive so you know because there's other people coming I'm sure yeah yeah there is there is okay fine she okay. would be like a five or a four you know like so let, let's just be easy on the, on oh, the on really the. okay I thought she was <laughs> a bit higher than that I would have I would have given her like a six but five no or four, no no I okay no I'm I'm not getting your question in that case. Are you saying give her a mark out of 10 or are you yeah. saying rank her? No, 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 and, uh, no, no, no. I mean, um, there's more than 10 out of 10, out of, uh, out of 10. So basically oh, so mark her from one to 10. Uh, Got you, 10, oh, my God. Oh, I will. 10, yeah, 10 oh, being yeah. the highest. Oh, 
eight. Eight, really? Eight? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah, you're a yeah. bit kind there, but okay, eight. I, I would yeah, say yeah, yeah. For, 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 for that number alone, I would say six, right. seven, yeah. seven or eight, yeah. All right. So okay. I didn't get you, get you. I, I was ranking her. I know, oh, that's to... fine, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's, I'm going to quickly throw them out. You tell me your number, okay? Maduri. Yeah. Solid, solid 9.5. 9.5. <laughs> okay, Ashwarya. 6.5. No. 6.5. Oh my 6.5. gosh. Okay. okay I stick with that. She's great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 6.5. Considering okay. I'm considering other people that 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 are there. You know, like okay. uh, Priyanka. Priyanka Chopra. Yeah. Uh, Priyanka Chopra. Five. Five. Okay. Menakshi. Seven point five eight. I'm gonna give you gotta give her eight. Come on, at least give her eight. That she was yeah. the most underrated dancer in Bollywood, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. She, eight. It, okay. uh, do, do you remember Damini? Damini, that yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that 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 Tanda, that, 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 that she did. It was amazing. Transcendental. Yeah. She's transcendental. But no, the reason I'm I'm also thinking of versatility and 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 things right, like okay. that. You know, so I'm okay. keeping lots of things. Well, with, yeah. Yeah. Isn't she trained in like seven styles? I Minakshi mean, was trained. Yeah. In seven yeah. Yeah. Styles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Crazy. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. What about Deepika? Uh, so okay, just on humor and just on okay, Deepika for me, I it's she's up there with Madhuri. Uh, up there with Mantri for me. Um, Goomer so, alone, Goomer alone for me is like the pinnacle of the industry. Just that number alone. You know that 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 thing that she yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. usually when Goomer. dancers, you know, and even when dancers come on, it goes into this. They really want to dance, but she, as an actress, she just she she dances like a queen. I felt you know, she, you know, queen doesn't need to prove herself. There was just this sort of yeah. bare minimum, and yet that's mm. hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. To do less like that, that's hard. That's yeah, so yeah. difficult. Yeah. So what do you give her? Would you rank her a nine? I would rank her, how much, how much, how much should I rank a Madhuri? Madhuri got 9.5. <laughs> uh, nine. I would give uh, okay. uh, Deepika a nine. Deepika's yeah. a nine. Oh my God. This is crazy. Okay, <laughs> now tread carefully, Sri Devi. Sri Devi, Sri Devi, uh, oh. oh, honey, Sri Devi is in a, like, you know, like the, 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 Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar, like the, 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 the triumvirate, Sri Devi is beyond that for me. <laughs> Above 10. Well, Above the, thing, 10. the thing is, the thing about Sri Devi is she sparkled no matter what she did. Like, I remember she did a dance in a movie called Joshi Le, not a great movie, but she did dance with Manakshi. And Manakshi mm. was actually a far better dancer than, than Sri Devi, but you just can't take your eyes off of her. So it's, it's a very strange one because she was a good dancer. She wasn't, I love, I, she's my all-time favorite, but she wasn't in, technic, in technical terms, no. the best, best dancer of all. But she broke your heart. You, she, there was just something about her. She was, she was, she was Marilyn Monroe uh, for, for Indian cinema and everything she did was just magic. So yeah. anyway, but in yeah. terms of dance, where would you rank her? In terms of dance, I was thinking, or I know how would that, you rank her? Yeah. Um, there were the thing is with with some of these dancers that, that, that you, you got a kind of um, um sort of mixed up classical styles so they would do, do a bit of that a bit of this bit of that and you know because that's what what i'm sure that you know the, what, yeah. what, what the demands were um but she was bad enough being trained technically technically uh, you know there were there were iffiness you know the, the, here and there i was like oh you know but having said that like you said you you forgot that she did, there was a magic about her, like she mm-hmm. wore the dance, you know, the dance didn't, you know, you didn't see the, you, you, you saw her. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I think, what artists should do, really, you know, so for, for that alone, it's like, for, I would say for dance, it like, she, she would be like a, like a, um, like technically, just pure technically, she'd be like a six and a seven, but in terms of dance, like the big D dance, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, of emotion and everything, bhava and everything, oh, um, way beyond ten. Okay. Incredible. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. What about Jay Prada? Oh, I love Jay Prada. Jay Prada, um, very goddess-like. Um, yeah. Like when I do drag, like I'm very like, oh, honey, that's like Jay Prada. It's like, <laughs> go to her. Like, like she can again serve face. Um, I would say um, seven. Seven. Like seven. I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah, yeah. What about Helen? Oh, 
20,000. <laughs> 20,000. You know, because the thing is, I'm, I'm, everyone thinks I'm a classical dancer. But I'm actually a coochie coochie cabaret dancer trapped inside the body <laughs> of a classical dancer. That's, that, if you really want to, yeah. So for me, Helen's like. Yeah, I know. You know just yeah. the joy, just like, you know, you know, Anne Miller in in Broadway. She has this amazing this step where she at, at the end, or Eleanor, Eleanor Powell had the step where they, you know it, it, they're really tapping at the end, and they tap, 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 that that thing that Helen did, she just made it into her own, just mm -hmm. pure joy in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a body. She yeah. was really interesting because she was quite westernized, but then she did this Indian dance as what was kind of westernized version of Indian dance, and then if she wanted to do yeah. Indian dance, she did it amazingly. She was just so. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, she's just very glamorous and very classy as well at the Natural. same time. Well, because because they got her to do sometimes they got her to do really kind of slutty things, but she was still classy with everything she did. Well, I think I think um, it, it it goes back to that. I think with, with 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 Indian culture, you know, what is what was sacred was also sensuous. Is there in the music? Is there in the spices? It's you know so. So, so why should something that is a natural celebration of the senses be, you know, when a flower opens up, it's nature. When a woman does slut, why do we say that? So with, with, with Helen, mm. she wore it. Yeah, she, she wore did. it. She was like, this is what I'm going to do. Take it. That's, see, that's punk rock for me. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. So what, from one to 10, would you rank her? Would you give her? Oh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Okay. Rekha is adorable and sexy and all of those things at the same time. Like I remember in um in um Kub Surat, that Sare Niyam Toda Do Niyam, you know that, that that song, <laughs> just adorable, just so funny. Like uh, you know, like Chulbuli, like that. Kind. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. she would turn up and then give you like uh, what was that movie? Um, uh, Khun Bari Mang. Khun Bari Mang. She, she gets fed to the crocodiles yeah. and with her two pearl earrings, she gets the whole plastic surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light everything. Do you remember that back. song? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The competition. Yeah, there yeah. with the yeah. other like, beautiful other woman. What's her name? Oh. I only remember Rekha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that thing when she comes back from, uh, she goes, and she's like in the typical eighties outfit, and she goes, and the camera's not going to her face, and then I mean the makeup was terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Just, That was like late eighties, wasn't it? Late eighties, mid eighties, yeah. And the yeah. camera goes and she goes, "Man, am modeling and I And we were like, dying. <laughs> like, but then she, you know, then she dances and she's amazing. I think um, Umrao Jan, for Umrao Jan alone, she's, um, you know, um, incredible. Again, uh, the more Ada as opposed to, to, to full on dance, more, 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 I agree. all of that. I like, agree. All of, all of that, you know, so, and then and for, for camera, like you just, you just, you know, the camera just, you know, like she's, I think, um, you know, when, um, what's, the, what's his name? Um, um, Lawrence Olivia said this about, uh, Lawrence Olivia's wife noticed this about Marilyn Monroe, said she doesn't act so much as she models the emotions like clothes. Mm. She takes the emotions, she wears Vivian them. Me. Well, Vivian Lee. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. With, with, because when uh, Prince and the Shogun was being filmed, you know, like there was this massive clash that they were having, you know, um, but, but it's like, if you watch her close, but Marlon closely, she's literally modeling the emotions, you know? Mm -hmm. she, so that's, that, you know, that's not a narrative brain or, or a linear brain. That's just a po poetry. Yeah. So to me, they cast poetry like that. Poetry, pure poetry. So for that, this is what I mean. This is hard to scale on a-, on a Yeah, on a, no, but like, rate her dancing, rate her dancing. That's the important thing. I would, uh, up there with Jaya, seven. Seven. Okay, what about Himaji? Okay, so he was an interesting one. I loved Nupur uh, when that came out. Um, yeah. um, I find, oh my God, stunning, stunning. Dancing, dancing is like, I would say, you know, classical dancer, eight, nine, around that She was area. a very good dancer, yeah. yeah. Very she good dancer, good. very good dancer, very classical, and also very grounded, very different. She'd like, yeah. and there's what, there was this kind of very, calm authority to her she didn't really always get up and some people yeah. mistook that for being wooden and it wasn't the case it was just very there was a loveliness to her and a kind of queen royalness to her mm -hmm. you know yeah there was what about asha parik um asha parik um, she's another one that was trained in like five styles i think she and she has dance schools in india doesn't she she's another one that's very very trained Mm, mm, mm. I liked her. I, I mean, like in those '60s movies, you know, like all of those. That, that again, um, 
I'm I'm I've never actually seen a lot of her movies. Like um, so I'm not sure. Like I um, mm. I just know her from those movies with with with, with, with Shami Kapoor, you know. So um. But watch some of her dance. Those. Some of her dance. She's. I think she's. I think she's one of the, my. She's one of my favorites. If you watch her, uh, yeah, because of if you see her doing, what's that song? Kanta laga, kanta laga. I know. I, for, I know. I keep, I keep forgetting that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I would make. Well, I think you know, like a like a like a seven, like um, you know. At least I, I think she's. I would rate her work. higher. I really like. Her. I would rate her probably around a eight or nine. Eight, eight or nine. I need to see more of her work. I'm. I, I'm just rating her on those movies that I saw. You know, sure, with, sure, with, sure. Before, it's just very kind of. Oh my god, he's drowning! Look, that kind of you know, um, <laughs> which is cutesy. It's very kind yeah. of sixty go go girl cutesy. But that's that's my memory of. The, of she of, also of did uh, Parade Me Rehne Do. That was her as well. Parade Me Rehne Do. Parade Na Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. That was her as well. That's uh, good, yeah, that's a good. They didn't give her like some some of these dancers who were amazing. They didn't give them hard enough stuff to do. Like Madhuri in the nineties, um, she got some bits every now and then. But my God, have you seen the dancing in uh, the movie Sergeant? Whoever choreographed that, oh my God, it's such terrible choreography. The mu- the songs are fantastic. The movie yeah. itself, mm, but the uh, what were the songs in it? As in, as in, uh, it was in Sergeant. Did she do the? Oh, the dance ones. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I, uh, my, just my brain remembers only like the really things that I, the, the things I really love and enjoy. I I scoop out, but it, it, mm. it, I know the songs. But I just don't remember the dancing in it. So I'm like, you know, like um, okay. If you want to see some really bad choreography, it's not it's not Madhuri's fault because we know she's amazing. But if you want to yeah. see some terrible choreography, watch the uh, the, yeah. the songs from Sergeant yeah. the movie. Yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. See, to me, to, to me, Madhuri is a mixture of Vijayanti and Helen. You know, mm-hmm. like like and her own, you know, and a bit of Suchitra Sen in her in like in the face and everything. And so it's yeah. like I go, yeah, huge yeah. Mazi fan. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. me too. What about Urmila? Yeah. Um, Urmila in Rangila. Um, te- I'm not sure technically how how, how she's she is like, like a proper item girl. Like she can really <laughs> rouse up an audience. You know what yeah. I mean? Like um. Yeah. um do you know a funny story? Baz Luhrmann, mm-hmm. um, dropping a name, but you know, um, the whole Red Curtain Cinema. When he was in, he he basically come to India and and he'd seen people in like in some town somewhere, um, you know, like a, a, I think I want to say UP, uh, and Urmila came on screen and people went crazy and mm-hmm. and was start, you know, and he loved that. And that's it was Chama Chama, that wasn't it? It was a Chama Chama song. Chama Chama, yeah. and he took that yeah. song and he wanted he wanted that experience in Moulin Rouge. Yeah, so yeah, we've yeah. got to thank Urmila for that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, a, so for cabaret stick alone, I would give her like a like a. Ooh, see, dance wise, I want to give her much less. Like technically, I want to give her like, really? like you know, like, yeah, like yeah, technically dance wise, I want to okay. give her you know, because you know, the, 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 at least the, you know, the choreography I saw in Rangila, for example, I was like, ooh, wow, you know, mm-hmm. like um. But maybe it's not this on her fault. Like, if you're getting a, uh, like a cabaret dancer to to to, to do like really contemporary choreography, that's not going to look great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, so so I'm funny with her. I would say like a six, seven around that. Uh, okay, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vijanti Mala. Vijanti Mala is um. A, I would rate her a little lower than Helen. Okay. Helen, you gave a, you gave her a ten. <laughs> you gave Helen yeah, a ten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helen's, ten. Helen's ten. Helen's absolutely ten. So nine? Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got two more: Madhubala and Katrina Kaif. I'm not familiar with the work of Katrina Kaif so much, uh, but Madhubala. She lucky Giovanni. Um, she lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, um. Madhubala, I would. Uh, it's just she makes me want to burst into tears. Madhubala, yeah, she, yeah. You know, and of course, yeah. I mean, I, I said you know, Madhuri also reminds me hugely of of of, of Madhubala. Like you know, she mm-hmm. carries carries that that crown. You know, yeah. um, um, Madhubala is um, oh, this goddess, um, sublime. You know, I don't know how she was technically, but I think 
lot of the kind of current Kathak and everything is, is, you know, like, we don't know how much we're influenced by someone like that. Mm-hmm. She's like, like the Greta Garbo of Indian cinema, you know, like... Um, yeah, but I think she was more of an actress than a dancer. Towards the end, um, they, they chopped her out and used other, uh, other dancer to do the hard parts of her choreography, because, you know, because the alcoholism and everything. Yeah, was the end of her line. yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, no, 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 that, that was Veena Kumari as well, no? Like, oh, um, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. That was Veena... Yeah. Am I getting it mixed up? But, well, I, have, I, call, I didn't know that because I, I thought it was Meena Kumari. No, I'm thinking of Meena Kumari. I'm thinking of Meena Kumari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Madhubala, I'm um, up then. Yeah, no, um, ma, so, yeah. so Madhubala, I don't know. I don't, just for that, PRK uh, or Danakya, like I would say for me, it's like a eight, nine, you know. But even that one, even that one, they, this is probably why I'm getting confused because they, anytime the spins came, you'll notice it's not her. They, they they chopped somebody else and put somebody else in there um, to do the spins, yeah. the hard spins. You know the fast yeah. spins in that in that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but all the all the bhav, all the all the all the gut bhav that stuff that she did with just that. See, the thing is with Indian dance, where does dance like physical nritya finish and dance theatre natya? You know, it's it's like this. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's only in the Western concept we go, oh, this is acting and this is dance, but it, in it's dance is dance. Dance mm-hmm. theatre is dance, not just dance. To mm-hmm. me, even this is dance. You know, maybe maybe she can't do a step ball change, put a very high kick, back bend, death drop to the floor. <laughs> I wouldn't expect her to. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm not going to rate her on that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, mm. you know, like uh, so I'm going to rate her on, you know, on on. Yeah. So what do you give her? So yeah, I would say like a, uh, like a, just on bhav alone, ten. Bhav oh wow! 10. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dance okay. eight, seven eight. Okay. Probably even less. <laughs> like pure technical dance. Yeah. Okay. So your your favorites are Helen, uh, Madhubala, Vijanti Mala, Madhuri, and uh, yeah, those are your favorites. Yeah. Yeah. And Deepika. Yeah. And Deepika as well. Yeah. Deepika just just for Ghumar and for um, Diwani Mastani. That uh, that, that, yeah. uh, that choreography is amazing, uh, yeah. by the way, that as well. Yeah, I, 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 same with the girl that chore- Just incredible. I love her work. The new girl that, uh, that's, that's done Gumar and just, oh my God, amazing. Amazing work. I don't know who that is. I have to look her up. I, I, we'll have to find her name out because she's, she's I think she's the, someone who carries the... The, 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 the baton the, from Saroj. The baton from, from Saroj, I think. Yeah. It's incredible. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Okay, so now let's come to you. I mean, we've completely jumped, like it's all a mishmash of a, of a order now, but yeah. it doesn't matter, let's yeah. just go for it. But how did, you, how did you start your career in dance? Uh, no, your training, let's forget your career. Let's, how did you start your training well, in dance? Well, um, my, 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 uh, you know, I grew up in a house uh, where, where there was a lot of music, like my grandfather had lots of old records, and so there was always music. And my mom uh, trained in Hindustani classical. My dad played the tabla. So there's always a lot of soirees, people coming and going in the house. Was lot, music was always there. And I just, um, uh, everyone thought I was either going to, you know, sing or, and I did do some singing, um, but never, you know, properly sat down to train. But I was just hyperactive, mm. you know, and, uh, and I, I loved rhythm. Uh, and my mom, the, my mom tells a story that, uh, that she, I, I discovered three. So I was going, that's forever, around and around and around. She could oh my God. Thinking, do something else. She came from the kitchen and she went like that, changed the rhythm. So my, I wanted to waltz and my mom wanted me to march. So you can just imagine the, the, the clash. So yeah, yeah. my dad was like, in fact, it was my dad who was like, they were both like, you know, why don't you just take me to like dance class? So that's how it happened. Yeah. Okay. So where did you go to dance then? Where did you so learn to dance? So my, um, uh, because I was always creating and, and my parents said, um, um, saw that they, they they took me first to well actually before I went to dance class I actually got really ill for about a whole year because um, I'm thalassemic which is like a blood condition that you can get major or minor if you're major you don't really live beyond you know your 20s but I'm minor thankfully so I was ill for a whole year almost and I heard Swan Lake and I loved the music and I got out of bed and I saw like a six feet in rock, but not the swans, but I, I knew, I, it was an old black and white TV and I saw the, these two men dancing together. And I was like, that, I knew that, you know, when you just see something and you go, I want to do that. And I know what the lighting is there. I was like five years old at the time. And I was like, mm-hmm. right, that's what I want to do. And I had a magazine called Misha, uh, which was a Russian magazine. And I found out that there was ballet in Marinsky Theater. And I said, I want to go to the Marinsky Theater. They were like, you can't, what, what? You can't even pronounce Marinsky Theater. <laughs> so, so they, how, how old were you? 
like five, five around eight to five, six, you know. Um, so I, oh, I'd already really danced really like at home because it was like dance classes happening. Like I had loads of cousins, like we're in a big joint family. So like the cousins had, you know, dance just come. So I was always dancing, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and I, I'd already done shows and stuff, you know, but not ha- had any formal tali. Mm-hmm. So when I was like saying, I want to do ballet, like this is it. I'm, I know what I want to do because I, you know, uh, I, I, I just knew what I wanted to do. You know, like I was doing plies, I was doing, I, I, I was doing all the classical things that were there. Like, um, so they then took me to uh, Uday Shankar Cultural Center um, because they were like, instead of seeing like, this is the dance you should do, just go and see. What, and so the lovely Amala Shankar, who's Uday Shankar's wife, she, um, and this is like, I was, I was five, six years old at the time. Every Sunday was 9.30 in the morning class. And I used to be like, I used to love watching like Spider-Man and, and, and Mickey Mouse in the morning. And they were like, no, you could have gone come to dance class. So there'd be like a massive, like, I didn't know what to do. I was either dance or, but of course, when I went there, she was great. I, I, my memory of her, she used to wear this kind of like a saffron pink kind of, kind of sari. I still remember this really well. And Park Street, this was at Park Street in Calcutta. It was like a lovely place to go in, in, you know, on Sunday mornings anyway. And they would do like folk based stuff, folkloric. Um, then, the, the, then the Shankar style, but because I was such a kid, she would give me games and tasks and she would say, right, there's two dancers in it, you know, so come back by this time or do three things there, two things there, or do something of your own there. She had all these amazing tasks. And then she would make the other dancers watch and, 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 and do that. because she, she would use the kind of a, a child's imagination and then use that to coach the older dancers. And then, oh, of course, I got to learn by watching the older mm-hmm. dance. And then I came into it. But she must have noticed that you have a unique imagination. Uh, and that's why she asked you to do that, right? Possibly, I don't know. But I just think also the, 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 the Shankar's, I, I don't know is the answer because that, that my, 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 my relationship with the whole Shankar school is, is purely just for a few months around that time before I, I, I left that. So I don't know how the, 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 the training is. I'm sure they use games like that because if she was doing them, I'm sure oh, the Shankar himself must have developed ways of devising uh, certain things. But yeah, I think I, I really did enjoy, I felt really safe. That's my memory of that. I felt really, there was no pressure to go, oh my God, do this. In the, in the, the, the pressure of classicism came much later on. With her, it was play, 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 play. What was, um, so this is in dance class, but what was, uh, so, so your family is Bengali from uh, Calcutta, yes. right? So yes, yes. what was it, what was growing up, uh, what was school like out there? So I went to a school called Lamarck Nair for Boys, which is like this, you know, um, it's like a, it's a proper old colonial era school, right? Um, uh, they have a school in Lyon in France and one in Lucknow. Um, and really the boys that went there were, were, it was very much like, you know, the leaders of, you know, India later on. Uh, um, how do I say it? Um, it was very much maths and physics and chemistry, that kind of uh, school. Um, I had a great um, music teacher there called um, Mr. Mazumdar, who runs the Calcutta School of Music. He was amazing. He would literally say, oh my God, at, uh, I would get up and dance and would play, he would just play the piano and I would improvise, you know. Uh, so that would happen every Thursday. That was great. But I think um, around the age of 11, 12, you know, and actually was the girl, I, I went to an all boys school, but because I was very expressive, I was learning how to express with my hands and that was a very expressive thing to do. And I think expression like that can be quite threatening to towards people who don't know how to express themselves. So it's like, oh my God, look at Ash, she's like a lady's. You know, so all that's how it first started. Mm-hmm. Then it became actually quite traumatic uh, from the age of um, 11, 12 onwards, where, uh, you know, like the whole Nachne Wali, all of that stuff kind of came in. But I, can I tell you a little, really quick anecdote that will sum up? Yeah, please do. Yeah. For you. So, 1,200 boys, you know, and I'm getting beaten up every day. Like, like you know, um, beaten up, yeah. like names, everything, you know, like all of that stuff is going on. You know, and then no, I'll, what, you know, what do they call you? What do they call you when they when they Chaka, call you? Hijra, like on the clap, you know, and the and the and then the beating up, you know. So um, yeah, it was the it was um it was weird because I, there was some people that were my friends who were calling me that in a loving way, and intention is everything. Like yeah, you know, absolutely. like you know, yeah. like so so you know, like, so even now, like it'd be like like you know, like I've got I've got like friends here who are like, oh, you're such a gay boy, Ash, you know, and it's like, and that's. That's of course they don't mean it in in in, in that derogatory way. So mm-hmm. I don't take it like, like that. 
But you know, you can call someone a tree and go, "You're a tree," and you go, "No, I'm not a tree." Or you go, "You're a tree." Or, oh, I'm a tree. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know how? It, it, you know what I mean? Like the tonality, intention is. You know, talking about this power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I, absolutely. Sort of intention is everything. In our words, I've said that know? so many times to people. It's like yeah. the word itself. It can, it can take on a variety of different interpretations. Just it's the tonality behind it, uh -huh, uh -huh. and the intention behind what you're saying. Anyway, Absolutely. sorry, let me interrupt your story. So, 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 so our, our, <laughs> our principal was was leaving. I think it was, um, we had this uh, principal that you know she was she was she was leaving uh, uh, school basically. Mrs. Innes she used to wear a sarong, tons of makeup, eighties jewelry, and chain smoke. Like we, <laughs> I loved her. Like she was great. Anyway. So she was leaving, and she said, "Oh, I, you know, I would like you to." dance something for me. So anyway, so I'm there. She's, you know, and um, I think I'm in class six or seven. So I'm like, the, yeah, around that age. And the music starts. My parents are there. My parents are backstage, right? And they're swept with a full auditorium. And the music started and it was Jai um, Janaki Ramanam. And it was like you know, Carnatic music. So as soon as they heard that, they all started laughing because their idea of what Carnatic is, what they've seen, that very racist, um, you know, uh, inter um, um, uh, portrayal in, in, you know, like the, the, the drummers that you'd have would have all the yeah, yeah. and everything. They were all going, you know, they were all making fun. And then they started clapping and they started going, chakka, hendra, chakka, you know, like, like, but clapping like that. And I was like, oh, this is awful, you know, like, and just like my heart is pounding like, like this. And my mom sweetly thinks, oh, how nice, they're clapping like this, you know, and she kind of <laughs> takes the curtain like that. She could be doing the curtain. Like, <laughs> takes, the, <laughs> takes the curtain like that to open. I'm like, mom, don't go. You know? So I was so scared. I literally went, I just rushed on stage before my, the music, uh, before my cue. And I literally gave myself to Vishnu, like, <laughs> just literally help me God, please. I don't, because, because my, my mom finds out, she like beat me up when I go back home. So I'm like, I'm going to get beaten up, get beaten up. I'm like, no, listen, at least, literally when you have got nothing left, you just surrender. Yeah. And I've learned surrender later on as an adult in, in terms of CPTSD. And, but that was a real test moment for me, Zach, where I was like, oh my God, go, go, just go. And I just, and you know what happened? This Chakka Hijra turned into this. Wow. Live. And I was like, thank you. You looked after <laughs> me. Goosebumps now even talking about mm. it. Do you wow. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't have stage fright. <laughs> because <laughs> Vishnu's got your yeah. back. <laughs> right, 1200 boys who are like out for your blood. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. They beat me up the next day anyway. <laughs> but it's like... But so you know. let's, let's talk about that because I went to an all boys school as well, which was yeah. a terrible, terrible school. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm always talking about it. It's the second worst school in the whole of Britain at the time I was there. So oh, it was sorry. a terrible school. It's okay. I did all right. I passed everything anyway. So. I don't yeah. really care, but it was a terrible experience. Um, yeah. But for you, uh, in that school, I have a few questions. The first question is, did you know you, you were gay? Did, and uh, were there any type of experiences with those guys? Or was it completely, you couldn't express it that there at all because it was completely... Well they, well, they decided I was gay before I knew I was gay. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I think I do, it's not a question of being gay so much as it is a, a systematic and sometimes un, unconscious suppression of the feminine. Mm -hmm. You know, we worship Durga and this and this and that. It's all there. But look at what the, you know, um, the way women are treated. So if women are treated like that, if, 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 if a girl is boyish, it's one thing. But if a boy is girlish, this is actually across, I see it across the board, you know, not just in India. You know, it's, oh, he's so girlish. You see, that, that's always there. So they're learning that behavior. They're learning to 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 um, cancel women or cancel femininity. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about oh, we've been cancelled. Well, honey, you cancelled ages ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah, yeah. you, you that's what you did. Your whole culture is based on cancelling. You know, we're saying no to that. That doesn't mean we're cancelling. Do you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So uh, to to go back to your question, um, I I was just to me the biggest escape to me was dancing. That I painted, I danced, I sang. I was just there the whole time. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to. I had uh, Mark Jackson on my headphones and Tchaikovsky and Chopin, just can't just just to drown them out. Yeah. Just to drown them out. It was constant. And the thing is, the teachers. Some teachers. Don't get me wrong. Martin is an amazing school. There's some amazing teachers there. 
But I remember uh, uh, going to the vice principal one day because this guy was like, you know, basically just touching me, you know, and I was like, just, just get off me, you know. And I finally went to a teacher and I said, this, this, this is enough. And he said to me, you know, I just want you to remember that if you're in the creme de la creme of, of schools in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. So, and I went, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, you know, um, things like this just don't happen here. I said, but it is happening. Really? You know, but he kept saying the creme de la creme of Calcutta. Mm -hmm. And I said, rich and thick, which went right over his head. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I'm wasting my time here. Mm -hmm. I'm not protected here. I did not feel safe. No, it was awful. Wow. Awful. Was, do you think and that was the source of your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was my question. Do you think that was the source of your CPTSD? Yeah, very much so. I mean, imagine being constantly from the age of, I uh, would say, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Eight, just the last year, everyone had exams. So, you know, like people just, you know. But one, two, three, four, five, five six, seven years. Seven years of bullying every day. Mm -hmm. And name calling every day even the junior screen you know, like oh you know oh get that person to tease it you know it was from everywhere mm -hmm. you know um i remember being uh there was some power cuts in, in in india like and i remember dancing funnily enough to rangila to um to one of the big you know songs in it and um there was a power cut and i remember you know the filmfare awards are like this mm -hmm. <laughs> so i would i would i would i would i would i love shapes i would like i was seeing my shadow Mm -hmm. And I was just going down, like, you know, hitting these shapes, right? Like kind of voguing in a, <laughs> in, in a way but without knowing that I'm voguing. Because voguing is very much about that, that, that feminism. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being them. And I really enjoyed being that. Because to me, they were energies. Like I would take like my mom's saris and not dress up as a girl. I would, it would be like a Vegas, like peacock feathers, my aunt's bra, <laughs> my dad's old school tie. You know, like just like urte, like, you know, like, that was the outfit. And, you know, some. Anyway, but um, I remember dancing to the shadow. Thinking, oh my God, my gosh, your arms, your arms are so weak. You can't box anyone with those. Your hips, your hips are so slender. You can't, you know. I said, my chin, my chin is strong. My chin is stubborn. <laughs> I love that word, that stubborn, yes. You know, so I would be like, come on. So you see like in dance as well, in Vogue, you see this, like serving face. It's like, mm -hmm. I exist. And you are annoyed that I exist, mm -hmm. but I exist. Existing becomes a political statement. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Do you Here's know that my song from yeah. uh, The Color Purple, yeah. the musical, I Am Here? Do you know, do you know that song? Uh, yes, I've heard that song. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, uh, how does it go? Uh, I can't remember the chorus, but it... it, it yeah, yeah. I don't want to sing. I'm not a good singer. Okay, okay, okay. But, okay that's uh, fine. I'll, I'll do it later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's... Um, it's a good song. It's, it's symbolic to what you just said, basically. That's why, that's yeah, why I, yeah. I raise it. Check it out. Uh -huh. It could be a mini anthem. It's a bit, a bit of an anthem for me at the moment. So maybe... Lovely, lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I love... New Year's Yes, yes. Yeah. And The Colour Purple is my favourite my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. All-time favourite. The, the original movie. Apparently, they're making yeah. a musical movie as well. A musical uh, movie of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a funny story about The Colour Purple. I went to see it with my... There was a Steven Spielberg retrospective. Mm -hmm. And I, it was the first film that was on. And I went to see it with my mom. And you know the famous kissing scene between... Mm -hmm. the, my mom was like, oh, what, what film is this? What rubbish are you going to... Don't tell me, no. She was so angry with me. <laughs> so what year? What year was that? This is... um. Okay, wait. This is... I was about 13, 14 then. So I would say 94, 95, around that time. Okay, so we're the same age then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, good. When's your, yeah, <laughs> me too. So you're Chinese, you're the sheep, and you're Libra. So you and I have a lot in common because I'm sheep with Aquarius, sheep with air. So we have a lot in common yeah. astrologically. So yeah. we're each other's sibling sign. We're known as each other's sibling sign. Because uh, sibling sign. Oh, that's yeah. all right. That's and one the other one, one yeah, yeah. the other one is uh, so there's always three. This because there's groups. So sheep with Aquarius, sheep with Gemini, sheep with Libra. Those three are most similar to each other. So, mm -hmm. um, so that makes a lot of sense. Now I understand why. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'll, send you, I'll send you your chart afterwards. Um, yeah, if, if you want. yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, this, yeah. your chart, the sheep Libra, there's lots of twins born in that chart. Oftentimes there's uh, twins uh, for some reason. I don't know why. But it's also the same chart that um, uh, Mira Sorvino has that chart. Did you ever watch Romeo and Michelle? The movie. Hello, yeah. Yeah. I invented it. <laughs> that's like me and my best friend from school's our favorite movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. You're the same as Mira Sorvino. Like, She's your chart. Same chart as you. Same chart as she. Is it? 
Yeah, yeah, you're the same chart as Mira Sorvino, as, as uh, Romy. As Romy. Because you, know, you know the film Oscar uh, with Sylvester Stallone? It's like, a, it's like a mob movie. Tim Curry's in it. I haven't seen it. Um, right, it uh, no, is Mira Sorvino? I know, maybe I'm, I'm mixing that up. Um, but Mira Sorvino just, just came up or like the other day because she, she, she was in Hollywood, the, the, uh, the, 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 the miniseries by um, uh, uh, Matt Brain is, is, is my, uh, Ryan Murphy. Oh, yeah. You know, um, she snake, did the the, the aging actress. Yeah, yeah. I love her. She's wonderful. Um, yeah, but yeah. There's a there's a lots of uh, lots of actors. Oh my god. Also, uh, the, Sean Ashmore and his brother, um, the, the identical twins. Okay, in the X Men movies, the guy plays Iceman. In the X Men movies, he's got an identical twin. Also, right. Also, what, okay. what are they called? Um, uh, Jedward. Jedward are your chart as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, they also your chart, but they're twelve years younger. Oh, but they were oh well. Lots okay. of twins. I don't know. That's always the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, Sheep Libra and Tiger Gemini. Twins. Twins. Sorry. Yeah. I said I didn't know I was in a, I was in a twins chart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't um, know why it is. I don't know what the reason is. But I, I what I've observed is there's lots of twins born of that chart. Uh, but I think you're trying anyway. You can have a look, have a look at it later. Um, okay. So okay. what were, where were we before I went down the astrological detour? Which I often do. Ah, Colour Purple, we Colour Purple, Colour Purple. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, so, no, I went to see that movie with, with, with the, uh, you know, and it was, like, it, was, it was on Christmas Eve, I remember that, um, in Calcutta. And, um, uh, and we went to my, my dad's factory afterwards and, and something, uh, like there was a big accident uh, afterwards that happened, you know, and everyone was injured. And I remember that because of, you know, but it was, that movie is quite traumatic. <laughs> Not traumatic so much as like quite, I haven't seen that movie since. Mm. You know, like, because my mom had such a visceral reaction to a lesbian kiss. Yeah. <laughs> and but then you... something blew up in my dad's factory afterwards. I was like, right, we're oh, avoiding no. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kiss. Yeah. Uh, from the CPTSD perspective, I think it's very interesting because you can, it's, it's a very interesting movie if you want to see how somebody would develop CPTSD. Then look at the character of CB and what she goes through and why she chooses the behaviours that she chooses. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> incidentally, Whoopi Goldberg is a sheep, Scorpio. Uh, Sugar Avery, the woman who played Sugar Avery, uh, Margaret Avery, her, she's a sheep mm -hmm. Aquarius, which is what mm -hmm. my child is. And the mm -hmm. woman who wrote it, Alice mm -hmm. Walker, is, she's on the cusp between monkey Aquarius and sheep Aquarius. So I like to say she's sheep Aquarius as well. It's very much uh -huh. a sheep movie as well. So uh, uh -huh. just, just throwing that out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's amazing. I have more questions yeah. for you. So, what were you going to say? No, carry on. I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. When you were a kid, when you were at school, um, what did you want to be when you when you grew up? Did you always want to be a dancer, or did you was there something else that you wanted to be? Dancer, dancer, dancer. just dancer, dancer. Yeah, just uh, okay. just I because I, I knew ages. It's one of those things. It's like like there's a question again. Going back to what you were saying about CPTSD, and, and um, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine it was the other day where a lot of people are asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And um, that was something I was asked a lot. It was in school lessons, what do you want to be when you grow up? And to me, it was like, I was perfectly happy. Because I was, in my head, I was like, I'm a dan I am a dancer. Like, that's mm. what I do. That's what I'm going to do. Like, I, I'm not going to be, because I already am. And it was one mm. of those things, like, with meditation, is what you don't do meditation, meditation does you you don't dance dance does you you know and and when i think that's a different frequency that is a different frequency to oh i'm going to yes you know um, yes that's, of, that's really powerful that that's sense? really like, powerful yes yes it does it does you know yeah. i will say this though this constant you have to uh work to do and you know and uh, there was always a goal and a reaching forward which is great to a certain extent it allows us to really work but to be honest with you, when I know this is what I am and I'm just constantly working on that, I don't feel like that is work. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? To me, mm -hmm. that's like play. And I'm doing it constantly, constantly. And then I'm like, okay, now I'll go to bed. I'm in that space. Now, that space is a great space to be. Mm. Now, what happens to us is it goes, uh, well, at least happened to me was, no, you have to be something and do something. And because I was being so bullied at, uh, at school, that my first dance teacher, Bhartanjan dance teacher, I'm not going to name him. Uh, very, very talented, very talented, but it was also very abusive towards me, mm -hmm. you know, because he was very talented and had all of this kind of dreamness. He was like, putting all of that pressure on me 
you know, and you know, you're a child prodigy and this and this and that. And then I was being, you know, uh, beat up by, by my mom at home because my mom has CPTSD, so she was taking it out on me. Oh, God. So I had no space, you know, so that was, so I was like, right, you've got to get better. I used to watch Liza Minnelli. I'm like, Liza, I'm sure Liza has CPTSD <laughs> after. And Liza's like, she would sing my depression away. She'd be like, you've mm. just got to get better, go. And I mean, I'm not, I'm so She's not, a dog pie, she's I think it's a wonderful She's a dog Pisces. She's incredible. Diva. She's, all the, all the she's, divas she's, she's are born in the year of the dog. All the divas are born in the year of the dog. Is she? Yeah, dog sign. I didn't know that. Mm. That's fascinating. Mm. Why am I a sheep then? <laughs> <laughs> because you're too, you're, listen, you're way too grounded to be a dog sign. No, not, some, some dog signs are grounded. Well, that's the first time anyone like, said I'm, I'm too grounded. I'm too, yeah. In yeah, terms of your yeah. psychological uh, processing, let's put it that way. I mean, dog signs, Yeah. I don't know. One of my best friends is a dog sign. My brother is a dog sign. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. I, I, so there's different types of dog signs. There's like there's different types of sheep signs. Like there's there's different. Yeah. It is, there is a core to each of these signs, right? But what uh -huh. what you find is there are patterns, and one of the biggest patterns of the dog sign are the kings and queens of everything are dog signs. So who's the, who's the king of pop? Who was the king of pop? Michael. Of course, dog with Virgo. Michael, yeah. Dog with Virgo. Right? Virgo. Yeah. Dog yeah. Virgo. Yeah. 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 Freddie, yeah. Freddie Mercury, Queen, dog with Virgo. Right? Who who is yeah. who is king of rock and roll? Oh my god! Um, I don't know. This, uh, who, who you... Elvis king Presley. They, everybody says everybody Elvis Presley, commonly known yeah, as yeah, Elvis yeah, Presley. Yeah. Dog with Capricorn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, Queen yeah, of yeah. Pop I... is who? Madonna. Madonna, right? Yeah. Dog with Leo. Uh, the king yeah. of directors, they say Spielberg. Dog with Sagittarius. The, the kings and queens of everything. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Latifah, Queen Latifah, dog with Pisces. Uh, Princess, Prince of Pop, uh, Bieber, is uh, dog Pisces. Kings and queens of everything. Are yeah, 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 dog yeah, 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 yeah. King of investments, Trump. What are sheep then? Sheep, we are. Okay. The sheep signs are the most connected to the subconscious. So we are the inventors. Thomas Edison, uh, uh, Bill Gates, unfortunately. Um, uh, uh, people like uh, Steve Jobs was also a sheep sign. Lots of inventors, people, uh -huh. lots of writers, lots of writers. And mm -hmm. what, what I've mm -hmm. observed is where there's lots of writers, there's often lots of choreographers. I mean, for me, I had two talents, I, natural talents, which was writing and dancing. I just didn't, I was raised in a Muslim family with a very, very strict dad and, and a difficult mother as well. So, you know, the only extracurricular activity I was allowed was to go to mosque. And even then we used to run away and go to the park. So, um, you know, there was no space. You used to run away? Sorry, say it again. You used to, used to run, run away, away. Um, go, to, go to a park, <laughs> just hang out there until it was time to go home just again. Hang out there. Yeah. Well, not, yeah, not yeah, yeah. So we, we, we did learn stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because um, there's nothing wrong. It's not. It's not that like there's anything wrong with the religion. It was just we, it, my, me and my siblings were so creative, and we wanted to do creative uh -huh. stuff, and we didn't want to spend our time mm -hmm. there. Really, not that there's anything wrong with it, but we just we just didn't want to. We learned at home as well, so. But um, uh, you know, sheep signs are writers and choreographers and dancers and uh, well, choreographers. I I think of I think of the rabbit sign as a choreographer and dragons are all often choreographers. What was Saroj? When was Saroj born? If she was seventy one when she died, I wonder when her birthday was. I want to look her up quickly. I think she's probably uh, either yeah. a rat or an ox. But Saroj was a uh -huh. Saroj. Come, let me look, let me look her up. Yeah, I'm very interested to know. I think she's probably ox. No, she wasn't. She was a rat. Scorpio? Scorpio Sagittarius cusp. 22nd of November. Rat Scorpio mm -hmm. Sagittarius. So the rat Sagittarius mm -hmm. is what Arjun Rampal is, is also what John Abraham is. They're, um, it's the male model chart. Because mm -hmm. both male models turned actors, weren't they? Um, so it's also very testosterone driven, that one. I suppose Saroj Khan was a bit like that. She was hard, wasn't she? She was tough. Did I tell you my, 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 my um, when I met Saroj Khan, it was, it was quite funny actually. Um, do you, can, I, can I tell you that story? Yeah, yeah, please do, please do. It, it's, she's, um, no, she was, you were saying how, what, what was that signing and the sign of uh, uh, the, the rat is quite Rat, rat Sagittarius hard. is what she was, yeah, yeah. Rat Sagittarius is quite Rat Sagittarius is quite, 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 quite cusp, yeah, yeah. It is hardness, you said, right? Well, because it's the, it's the, it's the most testosterone driven chart of all 144. Got yeah. you, got you. So, yeah, that the kind of really interesting because when I when, so there was a show called Dance Dance in um, in Mumbai. Uh, I was in Calcutta. I was I was I was in between London and and um, 
I'd gone back, you know, to, to, to visit. And they were like, well, you, got, you know, do this show, do this show. So I didn't, you know, it was, it was one week for couples. I didn't have a dance partner. So we found this really sweet, really lovely girl. Not a lot of experience, you know, and we went there. And I was in um, backstage. I think it was um, Javid, um, uh, Javid Jeffrey was the, was the, um, was, am, am I doing I mean Javid Jeffrey? Side Jeff, who's the, 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 the dancer? Javid Jeffrey. Javid Jeffrey was, you know, he was the, He's like a, a great dancer, a uh, uh, TV host. Uh, he did, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Boogie Woogie show, uh, you know, and all of those, those big I dance shows in, 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 in Mumbai, basically. So there was like a, you know, they were like, you know, like really proper, yeah, it was a really popular dance, dance show that, that, that were there. Anyway, so Saroji was uh, the, uh, one of the judges. She was, she was her, by Boogie Merchant and Terence. And um, we were backstage. Everyone's like stretching. I'm I'm kind of down on the floor in the splits, and Saroji comes comes along, and everyone kind of gets up and you know goes to do namaste to her and everything, you know, and touch their feet and everything. And I the thing is, it was right in the middle of the corridor. I was in splits. I wasn't going to just whack out myself out of there. You know, mm-hmm. and injure myself. So I was there. So she turns around, and I'm looking up, you know, looking at, at at the people that were there. She turns and looks at me. And she gives me this look, like this. So you know, well, you know. I just like red rag to a bowl. I'm like <laughs> stare standing on what this was. Like, you know, who am I? This is Saroj Khan. Stare off like this. And she's like <laughs> having pie in her hand. Yeah, as she did. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like for both of us, like Did you know who she was? Obviously you knew who she was. I knew she was. But I'm like, why are you looking at me like that? Like, why are you staring at me like that? I'm gonna stare back at you like that. It was so silly. It was so silly. It was like the, the, the whole thing like this. So, you know. Anyway, so the gauntlet is launched. I'm like, great. I've just pissed off the judge without even doing anything. <laughs> and moving. <laughs> it's really funny. It's got a good ending, actually. But um, anyway, so the thing starts. This girl, who shall be nameless, because she was so lovely and was so tense. So we, we, we're doing the introduction dance, and there's Saroji, um, Vaibhavi, Terence, and all there. Mm-hmm. And it's like this very cheesy, like Latin music, like tick, tick, tick. Yeah. And we're like, you know, the cameras are like swooping around, you know, from Kolkata, Ash, and blah, blah, blah. and I turn her, blah, 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 and then she misses a step, and she swears, like in front of Suraji goes, oh, like that. She swears, and I'm like, this is Wheeler back in, like back bend, back bend, back bend. <laughs> and I'm like, too late. Suraj, so you saw it anyway. When they came for the for the first um, <laughs> well, on camera, <laughs> on camera. Oh yeah, on full camera, like yeah, so they annihilated her, oh, you know. Right? And and I was just like watching, you know, like you. Yeah. And then she's, I mean, you know, manage your girl, and I'm like, well, first of all, she's not my girl, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it was like, lip, and I'm like, okay, well, she's not my girl. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Let's just get that straight, you know. So it was like, and she was like, okay, okay, like you know. Th- anyway. That was the first round. Second round, something, you know, and it was all these different different numbers that we had to do with props and things like that. Mm. There were these two girls called Akshata and Priyanka, whose parents worked um, on, on the studio lot. So they're a, you know, they're a massive crowd, you know, and we were doing this dance, like a disco number. I had these gold spangly sequined trousers on and the crowd was like going to, to those two girls and they were going, Akshata, Priyanka, Akshata. And in the middle of it, I, I had to do this, you know, fuerte turns, so they're like, they, in Kathak, you do, we call it, it's like, it's like this way. So, mm-hmm. uh, so like, it's like you go this way and then you turn the other way. So with, with fuerte, um, in ballet, you, you take your foot out this way and then you whack that around and then mm-hmm. you do a turn. And usually like ballerinas, like in Swan Lake, you do 32 fuertes and things like that. So in this disco song, I started doing, which I, I doing, you know, doing these fuertes. And boom, another, actually, <laughs> Died down, decided to just watch it. And the end, and while I'm dancing, it was a disaster. I'm dancing, this poor girl who I said, You need to dance around me, not come close. Of course, she forgot the direction. She came right close, and my hand went whack like that. Oh no. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, she's like, <laughs> It's like a comedy, you know? And I'm like, At this point in time, everything was going wrong, man. <laughs> anyway, and then I turned around, but, but this finished, and then I turned around. You know, showed my butt, not my butt, but like my, my gold spangly sequin butt and just did a Tina Turner. Yeah, yeah. And people went, it was hilarious. People went yeah, <laughs> crazy. 
we won that round, honey. Like, we won. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just fight all of that. And, and Sarodji was like, Acha, like this. Turn it out again. And I said, no. <laughs> this, is, this is going on. And then and it was really funny. And um, then by the end, there was an, uh, um, um, your, what was that number from? It was, a, it was again a Helen number. And, you know, the costumes I got were amazing. I had fan, fabulous cabaret costumes, like made from like, you know, like, um, like angels and like, like the best costumes, you know. So I was giving mom, you know. And so we did this thing. I did the big thing with her. And we won the quarterfinal. You know, and um, you know, I met her, and then she said she, you know, she, she was very nice, and 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 she was actually what you have to say. And I said I spoke in my sort of bare Hindi at the time, and I said um, I really respect you guys. You know, I really respect, and I don't know you all, but I really respect you all. Mm-hmm. And let's just keep it like that. <laughs> as a as a message to Saroj Khan. As if I was just like, honey, you know, but you know what? Backstage, she came up to me. And she was like, hi, like this. And I was like, hi. And she said, you all want to watch, you know, like this. And uh, you know, you're quite tough, aren't you? And I said, yes. And I respect that because you're quite tough. And she was like, she went, chalo, kebab khaigi. She knew, she was like, she immediately knew my, because I, I'm gender fluid. Mm-hmm. This is how advanced she was. She, she understood the femme mm-hmm. in me. Mm-hmm. Not just the gay, but also, she like, kebab khaigi. she's probably seen so many dancers uh, in her yeah. time and so she yeah. you know but, if she, but the thing is to win her respect somebody like that you have to win her respect because she doesn't give it out easily so i think no you've done the thing that. is the, 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 the thing, one of the things i've noticed as well i think it's very important to respect your elders but are you really respecting your elders or are you being seen as respecting your elders if you just mm-hmm. go do this all the time you know, and not actually absorb what they, you know, and not see their presence. Like if you said that person was there, I was like, yeah, this is who you're going to be. Like, I'm not okay with you staring at me like that and giving me yeah. evils. And I'm going to yeah. tell you that. Because but you know I respect what? myself. Let's, let's discuss you know I mean? this a little bit because um, in our culture, in, this, in the South Asian culture, we are raised to respect our elders. But what if our elders are idiots? What if they're complete dis- disrespectful of the children of the younger generation uh, making bad decisions. What if they are? Because there are so many of them, not just in the South Asian community, but every community. Um, but in our culture, we're, respect, we're, taught, we're taught to respect. And we, we, yeah. we, it's like you can't really get out of it. Because even mm-hmm. in my family, there are certain people who don't deserve mm-hmm. my respect. But I just kind of go along with it. And then just want to be the hell out there as quickly as I can. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you navigate that in the South Asian community? I don't. I refuse to navigate that. I... I Here's the thing, for me, it's a control mechanism. Mm-hmm. I think it's about the spirit and not the letter. If I respect the elder with the capital E as opposed to the elder who's there. Now, if you are, that's why I said respect. You know, like, if you want respect, respect yourself. Mm-hmm. Respect yourself. So that, that just get, get, you know, and if you respect yourself, then you're not going to chow down on somebody else and say you can't if you really if you really get respect you shouldn't have to command it mm-hmm. you command you know you're just there you're 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 in it you know some of the best gurus i've 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 met are actually the most chilled out ones one of the things that that, that i've noticed about um there's a thing a uh, lot of gurus have um not gurus so much as like the the repetitors would be oh let me give you some advice and it's like well did, do i know you do i want your advice and it's like this, like, how dare you not want her advice? You're younger than us. And I'm like, yeah, but the people I've gone to and asked for advice, they're like, mm-hmm. you got this. You don't need advice. Yeah. Age doesn't equal. You know what I mean? It's that old thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's unsolicited advice. And I think it's, it's I think it's a control mechanism. You know, I think it's, it's there to don't answer back. It's a sort of kind of sort of quiet everyday fascism, really. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm your eldest, so I know better. I'm like, well, if you really know better then then, then here's the challenge. Here's the skeptic. Mm-hmm. And also, you've got to look at their life. What, what did they achieve? What did they do? And if they haven't, if they haven't achieved, it's a terrible way of looking at it, but, but you've got to look at, could consider the source of the information. If they're going to give you advice on something, how have they fared in that environment? Have they achieved what yeah. they wanted to achieve? Have they lived a good life? Are they happy? Because I've noticed it's the people who are the least happy who are the first ones to give advice. Oh, completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's that that that's a given. I remember. Um, uh, I'm not going to name name names, but there was this, uh, something that happened in um, in London. There was these uh, dancers that were called 
uh, all these young dancers. And there's a very, very famous dancer from, uh, classical dancer from uh, India had come. And uh, there was a, a lady who's well known in, 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 on both sides, an, an elderly lady. She was, they were doing the, 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 the question, the Q&A. And, and when she, I was sort of the only boy that was there, and it was like, oh, how nice you little boys here, you know, like, and kind of this kindly patronizing and condescending, but I knew mm. it wasn't meant in a bad way. So I, I, I kind of went and I was like, okay, yeah, they're just, you know, like beta, I'm like, well, they turn you into family straight away, like hi beta, and you know, and then it's very patronizing. I'm like, okay, fine, sure. You're not meaning that in a terrible way. But then I started getting advice. It was like, oh, well, you know, um, you're known for being, um, I was in my in my twenties then, and it was like this. You're known for being this, this, this in your dance. Like you're you have a lot of speed, and and you know it's not always about speed. It's about this and that, and uh, you know. And I'm like, yeah, sure, great, of course, wonderful. And then she, they pointed at me. Oh, I'm talking to you. You know, you you dance like this, and you should, you know. And it was all of this kind of, not really. It was advice, but it wasn't just advice because I hadn't I hadn't asked for it, but it was a way of digging that pin in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Of controlling you. You know. And I went, you know, I have this dance teacher called David Ashmore, who's an amazing um, ballet dancer. And he, and he said this, he said, when you have a dancer that is 20 years old, they're going to move a certain way. When you have a dancer who's 30 years old, they're going to move a certain way. So if you tell a 20 year old to move like a 30 year old, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. They, they need to go through that. Like, you know, a caterpillar has to fight. Yeah. A butterfly has to fight to get out of the chrysalis. Mm-hmm. If you say, if you go, oh my God, that poor thing is fighting, I should, I should help it. You should dance like this. You should move like this. Then that, that, that leg is not going to get, the muscle isn't going to get strong. That fight mm-hmm. is needed so that, that we can fly. Mm-hmm. So a lot of this advice is, that, oh, let me help you. No. Well, I don't want to be ungrateful, but who asked you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> look at that look no <laughs> no anyway i asked I, I i told her this this i didn't give this butterfly analogy you can imagine uh, i gave this david ashburn analogy you know like I'm, i said i said thank you for this but i'm i'm happy with how i'm dancing now and in my own time i will go and do that and this teacher told me this this is what you know so mm-hmm. what do you have to say to that <gasps> it was like yeah the whole place was quiet you know like how dare you I'm like no i will Mm-hmm. You, want, you, want, you know, you want to bring that, 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 that talk to the, to, to, to the table? Let's bring that talk to the table. Why Good can't for you? We? Good for you. No, no, yeah, I'm very proud of that, actually. You <laughs> like, should be. I'm, you absolutely should my be. My voice has been suppressed for a long time. Yeah. That. As, as someone who's being bullied, it's constantly this. To me, the trauma has been like being in a vat of oil and with my, you can't scream, you can't say anything. What do you think so, of no, the environment I'm, now? I mean, uh, in terms of what, what you just said there, you've been through this sort of uh, suppression and oppression. Yeah. What do you think about the current environment, this COVID environment that we're in? I mean, do you think there's any of that happening now? I think, I think right now there's, um, I think there's a great upheaval going on right now. I think on a, you know, there's, a, there's an analogy of a, every stitch creates the big carpet, every stitch creates. And I think we, every individual is like a stitch in, in the bigger embroidery. So no one has, no one has the full jigsaw. No one has the full answer. Every single conversation I've had in the last few months has been about personal growth or, you know, the lockdown has come in and, oh my God, I've got this inertia and what do I do? And then the depression that has come after that and then the, the allowing the depression and then the healing from the depression. There's certain interesting things that are happening to people who are open to that process within mm-hmm. this lockdown, within this COVID. But then there are people who are being skeptical about why are we doing this? Why are we wearing masks? And, you know, and the, I think that the, what we were talking about intention earlier on, if there, yes, there are loads of, you know, um, uh, what we call them, uh, the, the, the tin hat wearers and all of those people that you know they're, they're, for example where i am in, in Panama, there are a lot of people who are who love i think it's almost like some some of a friend of mine who, who i kind of had to have a, a, a falling out with in you know because it was there was this, yeah, this absolute hatred for the nhs you know and i was like well it's really helped you in the past and so so when you're going out and and i guess i understand all your points but if you're going to attack those people without any any valid things to back it up i i think we have to be i, I had to personally learned to be 
kinder to myself as well as to him, but also lay a boundary and say, no, like I'm, but at the same time, I have friends who are terrible to people who have another point of view. And I'm like, see, now you'll be just being rude. Like this person believes that, you know, but if you go call her names, that's not okay either. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not, you're not giving that person a, a, a chance to, 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 I'm stammering away, to talk, you know, within all of this. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I just think it's a very interesting, it's like a quicksand, I feel. And sometimes I just have to go, like, if I wake up and I go into Facebook first thing in the morning, it, the mind just splits into duality straight away. And mm-hmm. it becomes so heated and active. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I, like, I feel does... like we've become, we, our society has become like that. I wonder whether, actually, yeah. you mentioned in Facebook, when, I wonder whether Facebook and social media has supported society to become this way. Before, you and I could disagree about something and it would be okay. We would still be friends. We could still agree to disagree and still um, communicate. Yeah. But these days, if you disagree with somebody, it's like, well, that's it. Then. If, you're, if you don't believe every single thing that I believe, you're just my, I, I've, I've got to block you and got to remove you from my life and stricken you from the record. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. There's no nuanced conversations. Well, there are, but they're not being staged on the mainstream, it seems. Like the nuanced conversations are happening where there's not so much of an audience. But people want that. People do want nu- nuanced conversations. That's just why the long-form uh, podcasts are, are now sort of growing. People like Joe Rogan, for example. People that are having mm-hmm. long-form mm-hmm. conversations mm-hmm. and nuanced conversations mm-hmm. because you can't mm-hmm. answer something a, a complicated question in like three in a three minute soundbite you can't do that no no so, no uh, no no and i think that the right. people's tastes have changed as a result of social media as well yeah yeah i you know um you know mary beard um uh, i, I uh, do know the name but i can't remember who it is who is it so she talked to, so uh, uh, she, uh I, she's um i think she's day mary beard and she she has this uh, thing um term called aggressive politeness so when someone is saying, just being rude, and I think, oh, and she's, she just goes, bless it, that's, that's not terribly fair, is it? And she, she never, you know, bites into the, um, she literally, it's, it's, it's almost like a muscle saying, I'm not going to take the bait and say something even remotely, oh, why do you not know that? Or, or any, any, anything that, that, that could be taken as a put down. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put this person down. Because for me, I, I really like that because I noticed that when I want to say something like that, I try not to, but, they, they, but, but, but sometimes people post crazy things. I'm like, really, really, you want, you want to say that? But even me saying, really, you want to say that, is at that point in time, like that is, yes, absolutely, my, my, my indignation is absolutely justified. But if I am going to engage in that conversation, if I want it to be nuanced, Nuanced conversations happen around dinner tables when you really cannot be uncivil to somebody and you're stuck there and you are forced to behave yourself. What happens with this, like, you know, it's just so swipe, 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 you know? Yeah. So we, like, I don't want to be bothered. But I'm like, well, why did you start the conversation then? I, I, I've been guilty of it. I do this all the time sometimes, you know? I'm like, well, no, 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 finish, finish it, finish it. If you're going to say that, finish that conversation and yeah. let, you know... And, if anything, if this person is as heinous as you think you know he is, the more you give that person role and really show this nuance and say, right, okay, we've done this and done this and done this, then let's see how that popcorn pops. Yeah. If that person is is and then then that, you know and then, then everyone can see that and then mm-hmm. okay then, then then I always say the coping mechanism in me understands the coping mechanism in you. I know that when I am writing and or if I'm reacting. It is coming from a disempowered place because I, my voice has been disempowered in some ways as a brown queer femme man. Mm-hmm. And the way I have been disempowered, that white gentleman there who uh, um, is, is saying white privilege doesn't exist um, has not been disempowered like that, but he's not been disempowered for the color of his skin, if that means. But he's also coming from a disempowered place. Now, if we go, you, 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 it's always this, but if you just be like a bird and zoom out zoom out and go okay but when people are i'm right i'm right my, my healer um uh she's an amazing healer. she says one of the things she says when people say i'm right and you're wrong it's like well isn't that helpful now we know who's right and who's wrong i <laughs> 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 just don't know what to say to that no? mm-hmm. well, isn't, well, isn't that helpful that's so nice well it isn't it actually isn't it's not helpful at Hel- all helpful is never the point 
helpful yeah. is never the point anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's, it's completely insignificant, in, um, inconsequential. It's not about being helpful. It's about being right. As, exactly as you yeah. said, it's about yeah. getting the win. And yeah. it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. When you, but do you think because, this comes because from... Because Ash, here's the thing. If you, one person is trying to be compassionate and comes from a compassionate place and the other person just wants to win, mm. it's very hard for... That person will leave thinking they've won, even if there is no win. There is no win. It doesn't exist. Mm. But the, this person will think that they've, they've won. And it's, and it's frustrating for this person that could see what's happening but didn't want to engage mm -hmm. with that energy or sort of... Because mm -hmm. all you can do is just step away. And if you step yeah, away, yeah. you think, yes, got, done it. I won yeah. that. I've got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Frustrating, but uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it comes from that? As you as you said, there, you know, actually, there is no, there is no win. And the, the whole. I feel sometimes that we live in such disenfranchised. You know, going back to what I was saying about who do you want to be when you grow up? There's always this: I have to do something and be something. You see that that energetically, it's very similar to I'm right. It's a grasping. It's a reaching. Oh, I'm going to meditate. Oh, really? Are you, Guru? this <laughs> all here you see how colonized and yeah. pinnacle and crown based it all is mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. it's like no 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 not playing that game not playing that game not playing decolonize decolonize this is, you know taking back that power yeah if, if i know that this is my perception this is in, just my perception mm -hmm. why do i have to prove it to that person that i'm right you know my friend uh, my friend told yeah. me this uh, story uh, like a fable yeah allegory I think um, mm -hmm. about uh, this guy who was wearing a coat and the wind said to the wind said to the sun uh, I'm watch I'm gonna get this guy to take off his coat and was blowing him and blowing him and blowing him and it couldn't get him. the guy just held onto his coat even more then the sun said that ah, let me try let me try just was the sun he just the sun was just the sun and as yeah. it was the sun it became more of the sun and more and more of the sun and became warmer and warmer and yeah. warmer yeah. and yeah. just by being the sun the guy was like oh gosh really hot I'm gonna take off my coat yeah 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 and he took yeah, off his coat yeah. because the sun was just being the sun. The wind was trying too hard. Ah, oh, that's so good. I yeah. think that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. I want to say something about the sun and how an expression, right? Um, you know, like, like when like when I've gone taught and stuff, like I, I've had kids like, oh, that's so gay, and I'm and I've gone, well, what do you mean by that? That's gay. Like you mean that's naff? Because mm -hmm. I'm gay. Do you think I'm naff? Because you know, like so, and I think you see right there is a control mechanism. It's just there in our language. It's like, oh, I'm going to control that person. That's gay, or I'm right, you're wrong, uh, you know. And uh, and I said, look, look at the sun. Look at the sun. The sun is the gay. If you think expression, if you think expressing yourself is gay, the sun is. The, it sounds like yay, look at me all the day. All the time. <laughs> like, you know, like it's the gayest thing in the whole world. If you think if if, if that's your definition of gay, is someone mm -hmm. who expresses himself and just is just fluid and it's doing this even when the sun goes down like i've gone i've, I've run to see sunsets like we, we're in a beautiful part of the country so even when the sun goes down and then within the cloud like it's acting shy and then to the when the, the rays come out it's like pew, pew, like it's so gay but you say oh the sun's gay but i am now i'm not gonna say this now the sun is gay man the sun the is sun so gay. Is gay who knew I didn't, I didn't know until i spoke to ask like, yeah! no Hunty, yes, queen. Doing that all the gay. time. That is so gay. <laughs> Look at the sun. Do you control the sun? No, we don't. We wouldn't have, you wouldn't exist. Like that leaf wouldn't, you know, like amoebas wouldn't. Everything we have is because of that gay lord up there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, this should be my act. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe there's a show in that somewhere. I know, right? <laughs> Um, the sun is gay. That's the name of the show. The sun we're is just, gay. We're devising now, honey. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, like we've we've been speaking. How long have we been speaking for already? I don't know. It's been. I can't see it. I can't see it. But it's been over an hour. Okay. Uh, about an hour and an hour and I'd say 20, 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah. And I haven't even got to my fourth question yet, which was, who are your Go inspirations growing up, and who are your inspirations now? So inspirations growing up, um, I loved um, Charlie Chaplin. I loved Charlie Chaplin mm. when I was a kid. I was, I was just. Wait, I'm going to tell you something astrologically. You're, you're, you're always drawn to your direct opposite, right? My, I love people like Kirsten Wig, who's Ox Leo, direct opposite to Sheep Aquarius. Charlie Chaplin is your direct opposite. He's ox, <laughs> ox with Aries, ox with fire, like uh, uh, ox Leo is ox with fire, which is what isn't that incredible. Always drawn to your opposite, and there That's you go. Fascinating. 
Yeah. Fascinating. I yeah. So I was drawn to Charlie Chaplin first, then Rudolf Nureyev. What is Rudolf Nureyev? Let me look him up. Look at Leah. Look him up. Yeah. So yeah, I I was then drawn to 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 uh, Ch Chaplin and, Nure and Nureyev. Um, dance. Yes. And Uday Shankar. Uday Shankar was like the you know um the um, Uday Shankar Nureyev Chaplin. Um, who else was it? Rudolf I loved was um, the Tiger Pisces. Same Tiger Pisces. As, same as Tiger, um, same as uh, Jamie Bell, who played Billy Elliot. Interesting. And also, also in that same Billy Elliot movie, what was the woman? What's her name? The woman, the teacher, the lovely actress. Oh, um, uh, Julie Waters. Julie Waters. Julie Waters. Yeah. Also Tiger Pisces. Um, yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. interesting. I found that very interesting. That, that, that the teacher that and, the, and this pupil was both Tiger with Pisces. And it's such, a, it's such a disciplined chart as well. They're very disciplined people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John, John Bon Jovi is also that chart. And he says that even also, when he's yeah. not, not performing, he, he will still do two hours of vo vocal practice just because it's his, it's his life. It's his way. This is like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have an interesting con uh, uh, relationship with the word discipline. Um, I prefer the term rhythm um, because, because, because I have been abused by a system that was very, I'm like, oh. You know, like, so I have to find, I have to not do it the way, you know, we've been taught to me. But it's like, no, like I have to, especially with PTSD, like, like my mornings are like, you know, I have to really stabilize and then go into my own natural rhythm reveals mm. itself, you know, from, 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 from within that. But yeah, but, but, but growing up, Charlie, Charlie Chaplin, definitely. Um, I used to draw a lot and I used to love cartoons. So I know Walt Disney is, is problematic, but I didn't know it then. <laughs> you know, like I just love the world of imagination um, that it opened up. You know, because I used to draw all um, the the Mickey Mouse characters and, uh, and and all the Disney characters. Me too, um, by the way. I used to love yeah. cartoons, and I used to draw cartoons. And I, I also used to, when I was at college, I did the the cartoon, the comic for the the newspaper at uh, college. Because Amazing! Was, you know what was it called? Uh, that one was Leah. I had a character called Leah for the for the um, college newspaper. Yeah. But okay. when I was at, um, I, my first play was called Religion of Love, um, uh, about a gay Muslim falling in love with an with a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, artist. And the character who was, um, the, my, the main character that I played, um, was a cartoonist, because cartooning was such a passion of mine when I was younger. And mm -hmm. in, as, part of this, uh, as part of the play, I created this, car this, this comic strip. And it was, such a, it was actually a really good idea. I won't, I won't talk about it, because I don't want anyone to steal the idea. It's a very good idea. Um, I'll tell you what, when this is finished, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, uh, it was a very, I, I just, it was just crazy. Like I, I, when I, I was just typing away writing the story. I, I, in this story, this character came up with this idea, which was a really good idea. I could, yeah. I, if I was to take that idea and turn that into a comic strip, it would be more popular than the play itself. Uh, it's a bit like The Simpsons, isn't it? Like The so Simpsons that happened in, in yes, um, yeah, in the, the show, Tracy show, Tracy Ellman's Ellman show, Ellman's show, yeah. Yeah. who I adore. That's Me wonderful. Too. I mean, all, I mean, all, all, all very, very best to you on that. You know, like do it. You know, that sounds amazing. I haven't done it. I mean, I wrote this play in 2008. We performed it at the yeah. Happening Empire. The, the first thing we, oh, did wow. we performed at the Happening Empire. And we did it a few uh -huh. more times the, the year afterwards in 2009. But I just, I don't know. I'm full of ideas. I've got so many ideas. And I just, I'm like, I just don't do any of them justice because there's just so many of them. So I have to narrow it down. I, I wrote a screenplay in 2018. In September, in 2018, I finished it. Um, and it's it's just been sat there. I've done nothing with it. I'm like, I spent eight months writing this this uh, solidly yeah. creating this this piece, and yeah. it's, it's great. I, I will tell you about it. Um, but like now, it's just sat there. I've got to do something with it. I've got to do something with it. Anyway, do, I mean, anyway. see, no, but I, I but I, I I see. I'm very much like that as well. And I, I have a lot of things that are there, and sometimes it it it, it overwhelms me. I get full on over. I'm like, oh, so many, you know, and mm. it's like. What do I do? And, and it's almost like I go to I go to a slightly like attention. Uh, I wouldn't say it's ADHD because that's not more, but it's it's near, nearish there. Like where I'm just I cannot focus on, on all of those things. But I think that's why for me the stabilizing in the morning, you know, just doing nothing, doing nothing, and actually being okay with doing nothing for an hour and just decompressing. Oh, I found that so like it's like water. It's like what, so what is your process? Tell me, what do you do in the morning? What do you do? Just to observe, just to observe, just because. For example, when I start, I did a massive forty-day healing, right? You know, when we, uh, and I was um, like for example, 
before the 40, if I, like, I'm sitting here right now having this conversation with you, like, later on, I would, I would have had this kind of real spring, like, like, oh, let's go party, let's do either that. So my body's coping mechanisms were just slightly whack because they, I've been in trauma centers for mm -hmm. a long time. So it's just constantly wired to go, idea, 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 because the ideas were how I escaped. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is someone is coming and reaching yeah. out, I'm like, okay, I'm going to draw you a picture of Madonna. Here we go. I'm going to, you know, like, or, you know, like, it's like, it's, it's, it's constant. Like, there was constantly ideas. Like, if, if, if I come up with lots of great ideas, if I am constantly on the ball with absolute, and make everything perfect, then you won't beat me up. Mm. Oh my so God, I, I did that with astrology. I did that with astrology because I knew astrology inside out. So it was like, yeah. it was my coping mechanism. Let me make yeah. it about yeah. you. And let me talk about you and, and what yeah. this astrological yeah. Thing is, yeah, 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 and yeah, whether yeah, it relates yeah. to you, let's discuss you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so um, then we can get away from being like, yeah, don't don't see who I really am because I'm I I don't want anyone to see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sending such hugs to you on that one. Like oh, I totally that's okay. like that's what I Thank mean. You. It's like <laughs> the the coping mechanism in me bows down to the coping mechanism in you. <laughs> I totally get that because before, for example, like for example, I have, I have a friend who's lovely and she's like she interrupts me all the time and i'm like i'm like why does she irritate me so much i'm like because you interrupt people all the time mm, <laughs> you know it's I mean? always the way it's always the way you know it's projection I mean? isn't it it's projection and i had to do this meditation that i, that, that I did because with especially with that throat chakra because it's been so blocked like your voice is not going to be heard your like you know your voice doesn't matter as a femme queer brown you know so there has been this colonization of of like you know like and constant suppression so, so naturally it's going, <gasps> and also I'm, I'm having to use that in a slightly more, more arched way to get out of trouble and get out of situations. So this is hyper. So one of the things with the meditation is to just bring your attention, I, as I've learned, to just this area. And just say, you know, no one else is hearing you. I'm hearing you. And guess what, 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 what would happen with me if when, when I was having an anxiety attack, I would be going, why am I having an, 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 an anxiety attack? So what am I doing? I'm getting anxious about getting anxious. Oh, but yeah. if I go, oh my God, my body is amazing. My body is telling me, look over there, something is coming. It's trying to protect me. Thank you. All this time I've been being so mean to my body. Saying, mm. Why are you doing this? Imagine if you had a dog, right? And this dog is trying to protect you. This dog mm -hmm. is trying to protect you, right? Because someone is dog. Well, someone, yeah, but, but someone can get it. It's fine. Okay. Don't worry. I don't have to go get it. Yeah. So imagine you, you know, have this dog and this dog is trying to protect you. And um, you're going, bad dog. And you're beating up that dog. You wouldn't do that to your dog. No. So why would you do that to that mechanism within yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you my know dog, what I mean? I can see like, my dog from here. My dog's called Chandani, by the way. She's of course, she is. Also, of course. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. meaning moonlight, but she Devi is one of her most famous. Yeah, I, know, like, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah for yeah, the audience, yeah. for the audience, they might not know. But, they yeah. might not know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so 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 going back to to what you were saying, that is my process, is to observe. Before I would be like, oh, I want to be good in meditation because I want to do this and this and this and this and that, and more projects and more overwhelm. I'm like, no, I'm just going to be good in meditation because. Um, I just like meditation. Yeah. And then, oh, I like this. And I'm just going to do it for the sake of it. To me, to me, that's like Ganesh. Like the whole concept of Ganesh is just that. Like Ganesh mm -hmm. has nothing to prove. He's, you know, so, you know, so Om Sri, Vinakaya Namaste, Vikataya Namaste, Vigneshwaraya Namaste, all of these things are really us. Like the concept of Lambodaraya is, is um, Om Sri Lambodaraya Nama means may I be like the elephant headed God. Like his ears are like this, right? So everything is coming here. He's not reaching, grasping. He's absorbing. There is the absorber. From there, mm. from there, from that giant place, which I have, by the way, gained a lot <laughs> in this lockdown, you know, and kind of enjoyed it, actually, because it's really grounded me, you know, because mm. I was like, like air sign, like, like hyperactive, constantly, you know, up mm. here as a coping mechanism. To come down the, the tree, come down, and just, ex oh, the projects happen e much easier in that space for me. How did you find out that you had CPTSD? Well, just, I had, I started having flashbacks in my twenties after uh, two years after I left India, like crazy flashbacks. And I didn't know what, what that was. I just thought that was how I was. Um, 
CPTSD, I started researching about it in 2012. And then I went to my doctor and I said, I don't know what's going on. And, and I keep getting these flashbacks and, and I'm debilitating depression and uh, crippling anxiety, you know, and um, uh, do I have some sort of disorder? Uh, and he said, well, I wouldn't call it um, a disorder um, uh, or, or, um, or I, w I wouldn't call it a personality disorder. Just check yourself out for CPTSD. In 2012. In 2012. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, so. Because I, I think it was a relatively for... new thing. I didn't know it has been around since 2012. I only heard about it since uh, uh, about two no, years I ago. No, I don't know. No, no. I, I heard about, well, he told me about CPTSD. I, I, I started researching about, about PTSD and CPTSD. No, CPTSD has been around for forever. Peter Walker uh, wrote an amazing book, uh, you know, uh, uh, way before that. But um, um, no, I, I it, learned. It, it, didn't it come out in 2013, that book? That book came out in 2013. Because that's where, that's where I really found out. I found out about it two years ago and I, and I found that book. With Peter Walker, yeah. yeah. Amazing. I don't know if you've seen my, my videos, my uh, interviews with Richard Grannon, who's a CPTSD expert. He's uh, uh -huh. so check out yeah. his work if you haven't. Do you know, do you know him? Do you know Richard Grannon? Yes. You, you told me about him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. So I started, I started looking because I knew it was po like post-traumatic, but I didn't know the, what the complex meant in, mm -hmm. in, in that respect, you know, because it was just, a, 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 I remember a therapist saying, you know, like oh, your, his nervous system is absolutely whack. And I was like, well, what serves me on the dance floor, what serves me every day as an artist doesn't always serve me necessarily later on in life, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, you know? So I'm very open with the CPTSD in terms of getting a awareness for it. And, and so I think everyone is operating from a spectrum of CPTSD if you've had any sort of trauma sure. in your life. I'm just going to quickly explain what, uh, what PTSD is and com uh, complex PTSD is because people might not know. So, yeah. so uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is caused by a single traceable traumatic event, whereas complex PTSD is specific to severe repetitive trauma that typically happens in childhood, most often abuse. Some may not be traceable as they happened really, really young. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what CPTSD is as opposed to yeah. PTSD. Just PTSD, for people yeah. out there who are watching this video don't know what it is. Yeah, beautiful uh, uh, explanation. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful explanation. Actually, when I, when I hear it, I go, oh, well, that's what it is. Actually, when, when, I, when, when I really understood, started to understand it, it actually gave me a huge sense of relief. Me you too. Know, not, me too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. When so, did you find out about it? Very recently. Very, really? very recently. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, uh, about two years ago, I found, I knew about narcissism, but not properly. So about two years ago, I read uh, well, a friend of mine, the same one actually, Shuva, the, uh, um, mm -hmm. the, the Bengali uh, yeah, 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 singer-songwriter, yeah. who I've, done lots of, I've done, actually done some podcasts with her. She, uh, so um, as part of my other, my other um, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube channel called Heart Nation. Mm -hmm. So she brought me this book by Dr. Romani Durvasula called Should I Stay yeah. or Should I Go? Because I kept attracting narcissistic partners into my life, narcissistic men one after the next, after the next. And uh, it was all about narcissism. Do you, do you know Dr. Romani Durvasula? No, no. She's, she's got a fantastic YouTube channel yeah. uh, with amazing yeah. videos and her books are great yeah. as well. So, so yeah. she got me that book and it sort, of, uh, it sort of opened my eyes that this narcissism thing is a thing. Like, a, like I just thought well, oh, my, my, so certain people in my family are just that way, they're just difficult, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. I realized, oh, so-and-so is a borderline, so-and-so is a, NPD mm -hmm. and because mm -hmm. because the characteristics were so defined mm -hmm. and that that sort of took me on uh, uh, another road so I, I just started reading more and more books about this stuff and then I watched more and more videos on YouTube and that's when I found Richard Grannon's channel and Richard Grannon was talking about the CPTSD thing and for about a year I didn't I didn't think it related to me I thought what is the CPTSD thing like, oh. and so mm -hmm. I, I, I sort of uh, pretended it, it, it wasn't related to me at all mm -hmm. and then as I was watching more of a uh, I've got to give credit to Richard Grannon on this one because he really did open my eyes to it for watching his videos. Then I realized, oh, okay, I need to look into this more. And then I finally read Pete Walker's book, second book, uh, Complex PTSD. And oh my God, my eyes just completely opened. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. This is why I act like this. This is why I act like this. This is why I do this. And it was, it was like, you know, it was so difficult to read this book because Mm. Every other page was like, oh my God, I do that. I'm blushing. I'm just go going all red. I'm like, oh my God, I do that. I'm so embarrassed. Mm. I'm so ashamed that I have these processes that mm. this is what I'm doing. And it, it traces to this and traces to this. And it's because I'm a primary fauna, a secondary freeze, not freeze, mm -hmm. flight. But primary fauna, mm. secondary flighter. So I've got mm -hmm. that perfectionism thing. And I also have the uh, uh, people-pleasing thing as well. And um, 
uh, together, it's just, it creates a certain personality. Do you, what is your uh, primary and secondary response? I haven't studied it like that because um, but part of my, my trauma was, my, like I was reading about it and I, there were certain aspects that, that spoke to me and certain aspects I was just freaking out when I was reading it, uh -huh. just like you. And I just couldn't process uh, th those things. I, uh, I approached it um, more from the pl pl um, point of view of CBT uh, as well as Reiki as well as uh, Tantric Shaivism. Uh, um, what was that one? So the Tantric Shaivism, okay. which is like the, this is like direct path Shaivism. So we talk about like the, the duality, the, like, so, so there's a linear progressive model. Which like say yoga Advaita is, the, is, is a progressive, like, oh, I'm going to do this so that I can get better. Mm -hmm. And the, the direct path model is understanding what the, what the, what the, what the qualities of consciousness are. Mm -hmm. Consciousness in itself. What is the part of the call? Consciousness doesn't rebuke you if you are sort of saying, "Oh my God, where have you been?" You know, like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the sea, for example, and you're like, "Yeah, it's easy. There's an easiness to it." So for me, it was about tuning into that. Let's go straight to that. Let's go straight One to of that. the things, if you're a primary form yeah. responder, is that being around nature really helps. Yeah, just uh, being around the ocean, being around trees, being, and I've been doing that more, uh, uh, a lot more recently as well. So, 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 so break it down. What, what's the primary? Um... So, so there's four, four um, F responses. So basically, when you're when you become hyper adrenalized, when you become hyper vigilant, um, you're uh, you you kick into fight, flight, freeze, and uh, yeah. uh, fawn responses. So the fight is when the majority of narcissists that that we meet are stuck in a, in a, a fight, fight response, okay? That's the, they've had a trauma and they've gone to a fight, fight place. Um, yeah. That's their primary, primary response. The, the um, flight, it becomes running away, becomes perfectionism. Uh, so people have to do everything perfectly and, and then they're super, super self-conscious about their own things. And then they become very critical of other people because they also have to be perfect because if I'm not perfect and they're not perfect, then things aren't right. But you never yeah, get to yeah. place perfection. So they become really critical. Um, but often sometimes it's just internally, but sometimes it's out outwardly as well. So that's um, a, a flight response. Freeze response is becoming dissociative, becoming numb, losing time, uh, sort of checking, checking out. So this is a problem with the people who have addictive personalities. So they will just go to drugs or they'll just go to uh, uh, alcohol uh, addiction or porn addiction or whatever it is. And then the fawn response is what I have, which is... Uh, I was a parentified child. I did. I did. Um, I looked after everybody. I made sure everybody was okay. I, I put everybody else's needs before my own. My own mm -hmm. needs were last. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of gay oh, men have the a lot of gay men have the fight primary response, and a lot of gay men have the fawn response. So um, uh, so it's it's very interesting because a lot of these drag queens were really harsh and hard. I think are stuck in a fight response. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that's really fascinating. I I, I have heard of these. I just didn't. Um, well, well, it's not an easy thing to, my, my I mean, title, sorry. it's not an easy thing to, to remember. It's just, I've read the book so many times now because I want to yeah, really understand yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I, for me with, with, with the book itself, because I, I was like, cause I, just like you, I was going, oh my God, that's me. You know, I was just, the so thing is because I have such a heightened hypervigilance. Yeah. So when I'm binding out, I'm like this, that, that's, I'm, I'm hypervigilant about being hypervigilant, which is mm -hmm. completely. I understand that. The purpose, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's why for me, it was like. But that comes from because you is. felt really unsafe. That's why, that it, yeah, because yeah. you just didn't feel safe. It must have been that yeah. you didn't feel safe at school, and, at home. Yeah. There was nowhere yeah. where you felt safe. And so yeah. you felt really yeah. exposed all the time. Constantly, yeah. And also as a Libran, I have this very sense of fairness. Like I, it has to, I have a real sense of justice. Like this is, there's a sort of divine justice thing that I, that, that, that I truly, you know, I just, I just innately have it. Mm. So when something is being wronged, you know, and I'm going, but, you know, like, um, like my dance teacher was, um, my, you know, just uh, awful in, 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 in that respect. And so when I, when I went to speak to my parents about it, they were like, he's your guru, he can do that. And I'm like, what? Mm. You know, so, so never, never, um, and it was just that guru mentality. It's, it's, I'm not blaming them for it, but I had to deal. I was the one who I was the one who had to deal with the, and a lot of people say, you know, you have to forgive. No, you don't have to forgive. Uh, forgiveness is something that has, I think for me, appeared like after a long time, like when I was going, I have to forgive them, otherwise I won't heal. And it's like, well, that's another thing for you to worry about. It's like, no, 
your your body that's what i'm saying the coping mechanism in me bows down to the coping mechanism in you if i understand that my body is going no i cannot forgive that person because by me not forgiving that person i'm keeping an eye on that person that's all i'm doing and i'm trying to help you yeah well i you I, I i i sort of say this thing that it, it, if if I forgive that person, what does that really, really mean? I mean, you've got to really break exactly. it down. Let's break it down. What yeah. it really means. So if I, I, I could forgive that person, I don't have to tell you I forgive you. I could just forgive you by myself in order to free me to go and live yeah. my life. But it, yeah. I, won't, I, I still don't choose to have you in my life. I yeah. still don't choose oh, to engage with you. Just There's accountability, yeah. You, I, my forgiveness is a gift that I've given to myself. It's not about you. Exactly. So, yeah. and only you can decide when you want to give that gift to yourself. But some you people know. can't be told. You can't, there are certain people you cannot tell that you have forgiven them because it means a different thing to them than it does to you. And also, yeah. forgiving a narcissistic personality, for example, gives them complete uh, uh, license to do it all over again. So, yeah, absolutely not. So absolutely not. you should no. not tell a narcissistic personality that you forgive them because yeah. that's no. opening the door to abuse, as far as I'm concerned. Completely. No, absolutely. I 100% agree. I think uh, for me... The biggest thing was to, re to, to kind of zoom out and go, oh, that person has narcissistic disorder. And not just that, they're not, they know that and they won't do anything about that. Mm. Like, it's like saying, it's like saying I've got a sprained ankle and I'm going to step on you because I've got a sprained ankle and you can't do anything about it. It's like, no, that's not what, you know. So, so you need, like you said, compassionate boundary, mm -hmm. you know, or, or cutting that. that uh, but for me, it was like, the more I started to listen to myself and understand my own process, I was like, okay, that's what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So that it wasn't so much forgiveness, so much as, as a sort of broader understanding of the whole situation. And therefore, it was like a sort of, you know, like the, 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 the chains fell off me mm -hmm. when that happened. Forgiveness was just, a, it became redundant when you understand it. It's like, oh, okay. I well, get it. <laughs> maybe what I'm calling forgiveness is what happened in that process for yeah, you. Yeah, because it's, it, yeah. ha it, it has to be organic forgiveness. You can't yes. force it. You can, you can say it as much as you want, but if it hasn't happened, you haven't let go of it. Yeah. You haven't yeah, 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 yeah. So it has yeah. to be, it's an organic process. It is organic. I love that term, organic forgiveness. How do you have any organic forgiveness? <laughs> just that. ask Vishnu he'll give it to you but if we're out of uh, organic forgiveness we have forgiveness <laughs> well no because there is a difference there is a difference forgiveness is, a is like a difference. you can't force yeah. you can't force forgiveness uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. it happens when you're ready to let it go surrender yeah, it happens really like surrender. it's one of those it's like a, you realise oh I have you haven't done it on purpose it just has happened you know uh, and that's what's beautiful that's just one of the things you know you have healed yeah. you know but you don't have to do it to heal you by the way i want to show you i want to show you something i just um um it should be yeah. right here just give me one second i want to show you i got these yeah. cards these um um ganesh cards which are beautiful they're beautiful i don't know if you yeah. do you do cards do you do sort of the, are you into, into that sort of stuff like the tarot cards they like tarot cards, but these are more like just um, guidance cards. They're, so they're just really guidance beautiful. I've, I've got like indigo cards, basically, um, you know, which mm. uh, sometimes I start the day with. Like indigo children cards, you know. Like, yeah, so, right, so yeah. They, they, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. show you these Ganesh cards. They're stunning. Just one second. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Let me show you these beautiful cards. It's called Whispers of Lord Ganesha. And look okay. at these beautiful images. Look at that. Wow, 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 wow. Stunning. This one's the inner knowing one. It's just inner really, knowing, yes. you just look at these images and just let them impact you. I mean, uh, this yeah. is something to do with meditation. Um, yeah, see, the, the, the inner knowing one is amazing. What I was saying about Lambodara Nama is, 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 oh, I love that. Is yes. when, you're, when you're far away from all of that madness and you're there in your center, in your yeah. trunk, you're right there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then everything happens, to, everything comes to you. You, know, you go to that person, you know. Yeah. Just being, being in stillness, being in presence. Yeah, yeah. Human being, not human doing. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, we've, we've really gone all over, all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of these just don't seem, they, some of my questions just seem really simple now. Some like a... No, no, go for it. Go for it. Well, they just seem really silly now. Go for it. I think we've had quite a profound conversation and to sort of come, come back to some silly questions. It just, like I've written here... Oh. Uh, what is your favorite okay. film? Eng English, Bollywood, and Bengali. Oh no, I love that question. <laughs> All right, go on, go on. Okay, so um, oh, there's so many. Um, oh, favorite film: English, Bollywood, and Bengali. Uh, Bengali film favorite is Meghajaka Tara by um uh, uh 
Riti Ghatak, uh, who was uh, an amazing filmmaker. You know Riti Ghatak? No, uh, I don't. So, I don't. so he was, he's, uh, so uh, I think Vanity, not Vanity Fair, um, Variety Magazine, one of those big um, Hollywood magazines did a whole thing on him called, called, calling him the undiscovered master, the undiscovered genius. He was mm -hmm. sort of in Satyajit's Ray's shadow quite a bit. And he made some incredible films. And uh, Megan Nakatara is, is during the, 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 the um, there was a, I think it was after the flood in Bengal. Um, uh, and it was like this great, um, one of the big depressions of Bengal, basically, you know. And, um, uh, and uh, this woman was, yeah, it's an amazing film. You should, you should check it out. It's about mm -hmm. this woman who uh, uh, worked at that time and got her whole family, um, uh, you know, uh, sent her brother to, to, to abroad to, to, to study music and her, she herself died of tuberculosis. Okay. And things like this were, were kind of were happening, you know, around that time. So, um, uh, yeah. So that's my, one of my favorite films in Bengali. In English, it is um, one of my, I don't know, I'm so many films like that. I, the Lion King is, I love The Lion King. <laughs> it's just a, because, I really understand the, 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 the journey of the hero, you know, mm. in terms of, you know, running away from troubles, from, from trauma and hakuna matata it, and then going back to Pride Rock and saying, we left, that, we left our escapism for this. So yes, this is our home. And for me, that's like my, the, the symbology of that is, is I ran away from myself, you know, and mm. then when I came back, I didn't want to do the healing work because I thought I was like, oh my God, I'm like, well, I have to. I have to. I, I, that movie taught to really respect myself, you know. So, so that's one of the, the reasons for it. I also love uh, Bridges, Bridges, uh, Bridges of Madison County. You know, I'm a bit of a romantic at heart, so I would love that kind of. <gasps> will she? Won't she? Will she? Won't she? When she's in the in, in oh my god, yeah, totally. Uh, on the waterfront with um, uh, Marlon Brando, because um, he's just that, that. That whole fight scene is just incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, Woody Allen films. Um, uh, Bullets of a Broadway is one of my all time. Have you seen that film? I don't think you I must have, see it. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's 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 all sort of like mafia people, you know, giving, and it's like um, my one of my favorite jokes that it is the alcoholic actress goes into the bar with the playwright and goes, uh, uh, two vodka martinis, please, very dry." And the playwright says, "Oh, <laughs> how do you know what I drank?" And she says, "Oh, you want one too? Three. You know, and it's just <laughs> like silly things like that. I love banter, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great to check out. Dan Weiss is in it. And Hindi. Hindi film, oh my god. Um, oh my god, I don't know, I can't, so many. Um, well, actually, it was Roja's not a Hindi film, but Roja was one of my, I saw it in Hindi, that makes sense. Um, what film? Uh, Roja. Roja. Roja, um, as in um, Cry. Roja, Jani, yeah, um, as in um, Mani Ratnam. Okay. Yeah, you know. Um, I don't know uh, this movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God, you love it. It's 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 about the the Kashmir um, cargo. Well, it's not cargo, but it's like th that whole someone was abdu was abducted, and this this girl basically, it, her husband gets gets abduct uh, abducted, and she just fights for to to, to get him back. And it's got mm -hmm. the most amazing songs, but not in a musical number. It kind of is, but it, yeah. You should, you should check, Send check, me a link to that. that. Send me a link to that so I can. Yeah, the music is my S R M A N S. That's how what. That 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 movie made Eraman the big star in mainstream uh, Bollywood. Okay, you know, incredible. Do you, do you know incredible. what year it came out? Out of interest. Uh, I think ninety seven, ninety six. Okay. Yeah, okay. around that time. I say, yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Hindi film, um, Shahi Bibi Gulam. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oldies, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the old ones, yeah. That's what I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, Classics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, I'm actually running out of time. Maybe we could do another okay. one. Because I, like, I've, yeah, that's uh, okay. That's okay. Listen, and, um, yeah, I'm, I have to go to. Um, I've got my my wonderful therapy session after this. Although this has been like a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> Tell me more about CPD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Oh no. Okay. But li li so let me, let me just take another five more minutes of your time. Just to yeah, no, let's go, just, go, 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 just go, go, yeah. no, no, My dog yeah. is really trying to come here. Do you want to see Chandni? I want to see Chandni. I'm so booby. I'm, I'm going to give birth to a dog myself. Come it's like. Come here, Bubbly. This is my Chandni. Oh, my can I see? Oh, let's, let's have a look. Oh, sorry, darling. Oh, he's so cute. 
Oh, she's, she's adorable. Couple. She is. She's a half Oh, my Labrador. God. The eyes. She's lovely. She's my baby. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I'm so glad you called her Chani and not Luna. <laughs> well, it's so funny. We met a Luna in the park the other day. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, John, it had to be John. My friends took one look at her. I was going to, as a joke, I said I was going to call her Bridget. But I wasn't, I was never going to call her Bridget. It was just a joke. Uh, and then yes. uh, my friend um, uh, Asif said, took one look at her, said, you, you know how you love your John? You know you love Shridhari? Call her Chandni. And I was like, oh my God, it's perfect. Because she's yeah. pure moonlight color. She's like that, that cream yeah. sort of white. She's even got stains on the ears. Like, um, oh. you can't, you can't, can't show you. Can you see it? No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm probably yanking her ears out. Like, yeah. <laughs> look at her ears. Yeah, you yeah. Can see. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Anyway, she's Oh got, my God, that's so cute. Oh, that's adorable. Is John for dog joy here? You know? <laughs> I know, I know. It's like doing all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so, so, um, Bichari, yeah. she's really hot right now. She just wants to go out for, yeah. a, for a run. I'll yeah. a second. It's really hot yeah. in here. Um, oh, yeah, what were yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we saying? I completely lost my train of thought now. You were, uh, you were going to ask me another question. Five more minutes, I said. Yeah, so yes. did the dance industry welcome you? Was there racism when you came here when you were 18, 19 years old to, to London? Um, the thing is, I was so wide-eyed and innocent. I, didn't, I was like, yay, party, dance, move. You know, I'm here. And, you know, like, and I was just hungry for training. I didn't understand it at the time. Um, I'm going to say no overall. Mm -hmm. um, the college I went to, there were some teachers who made slightly off-color remarks. You went to dance sometimes. Studio, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and just like, oh, why don't you do your little Indian classical dance? You know, and I was like, excuse me, when I got that, when, I, when, when that was told, uh, told to me. Uh, there was one particular teacher who, yeah, I was like, uh, looking back, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you was kind of racist. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was, um, yeah, I mean, um, I have to say overall, um, no. Um, Great. It wasn't there to kind of go, it, overall I was very welcomed. More than welcomed. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, yeah. At all, no. Your video has yeah. gone really funny at the moment. Yeah. I can't really, I can't see you properly. Yeah, I know. Don't I don't know why, what's going, what's going on. Ooh. Oh dear, okay. okay. Let's, let's, let's wrap yeah. it up, let's wrap it up. Um, Maybe yeah. we can okay. Sure. Maybe we can have another conversation because I want to know what it was like growing up uh, uh, gay at that time in in India in the UK and how, what your family were like with you. So that's maybe that we can say that for another yeah, uh, sure. conversation and maybe we can share sure. stories. Now, sure. Happy to. Too. All right. Cool. Um, and also finding love. That was another that's thing. Uh, all right. What well, was it? Finding, where, yeah, finding yeah, 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 yeah. Where can we find you? Where can we find you? Uh, how, can, how can people find you on social media, uh, on YouTube or whatever? Social media, if you just go to, um, if you just put Dance with Ash, oh, it's there. If you just put Dance with Ash, I'm on, on Facebook as Dance with Ash, on Instagram as Dance with Ash, because we've been doing some amazing, um, there's some amazing ladies over here, and I love working with um, uh, women over 40. Like, well, I'm, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe you can tell me, what was it like growing up gay? Uh, uh, what were your family like? What were your friends like? Uh, in India, and also then when you came here, what was it like? And did you come here with your family, or were you, uh, did you come here by yourself young? I came by, by myself. I had uncles and aunts here and cousins here, you know. Um, um, but, uh, but my parents lived in, uh, stayed, stayed on in India. And um, uh, what was it? Well, uh, being, uh, I was bullied a lot, you know. Um, uh, I don't think I realized I was... Um, I was gay until I mean, you know, my, my dad was quite chill about it. Like I remember asking him. I, I said, um, I said to him one day, I said, I, 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 Bodyguard had just come out, and I, I was twelve, and I was like, I had a massive crush on Kevin Costner, and I was like, Dad, <laughs> I have a crush on Kevin Costner. Like, does that mean I'm gay? And you know, my dad was very chill. He was like, um, he said, Well, you're, he said, you're twelve now. Is it just? I mean, he said, I'm not. This is he. As, when I think back, I think how amazing is that thing that he said. He said, I'm not telling you that it's a phase, but you're very young. Just don't put yourself into any, any brackets right now. Just observe. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad said that to me. You know, my mom, on the other hand, was extremely homophobic, you know, mm -hmm. and um, like painfully so. And um, so for her, it was a, it was a, a, a real, 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 real um, struggle. And to the point where um, she could have accepted our wedding and our, uh, our marriage and everything, but then she kind of took it all back and was just like, 
just to and fro, to and fro, you know, like, I'm not going to get any grandchildren. And I'm like, I really would not want to bring, you know, I have CPTSD. Like I, like I have a full-time job to myself. <laughs> like mm. I'm not looking after it. <laughs> God knows. So yeah, it was, it was, it, it was, it was tough. When I realized that she wasn't actually being happy for my success, I was, I found myself sabotaging my own success. So like, well, if she's not happy with it, I'm going to sabotage it. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And it was just this most, she's like, I want you to succeed, but not too much. And if you don't succeed, then I'm going to shame you. But if you succeed yes. too much, too much, I'm going to be unhappy. It's like, yes, yes, you don't yes. want me to spit, you don't want me to stand, what can I do? It's, it was, but that was her, like, when I was growing up, it was that, like, oh, that's too feminine. Or, or if I ran naturally, like a, like a, well, I wouldn't say, boy, I just ran, I'd get a smack for running. Cause that's mm-hmm. you know, like, it was a control thing. And then when I was not running and just being not a boy in her eye, he were like, oh, you're girlish. And I was like, what? Well, you do, know, do, was, do you have brothers and sisters as well or not? I have a sister. I have a, I have a sister. So my, so my, my parents adopted when I was, um, uh, when I left. My mom had like major, um, uh, empty nest and can I adopt? I'm like of course adopt away <laughs> you know and um, yeah so my sister's amazing and they were like when, when they adopted her they were like oh she's going to be you know she's going to be the um, the engineer the mathematician da, 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 all of this you know we won't mess she actually said we won't mess this one up and I was like oh thanks oh, I'm, um, I know right yeah. <laughs> anyway my sis is artist <laughs> I'm like yes <laughs> You know, like complete, and she's so like she's you know she's she's uh, adopted from other trees as um and she's like a she's studying uh, graphic design right now and uh, you know finally just um just the wisdom in her you know like just the her how old is she so much what's, what's her date of birth September Which September, September yeah so what she's year Virgo. she's the Virgo but do, oh, do, uh, she's, roughly do you know which which couple of years it was which couple of years I would say she was so I came to so she would have been born in um nine Ninety-four, possibly. Okay. I want to say. Okay, ninety-four or ninety-five or ninety-three. Na- yeah, yeah. So ninety-three Virgo is the uh, the Beyonce, um, the, the Rooster Virgo, pure perfectionist. I don't think that's what she is. Dog Virgo, which is ninety-four Virgo, is what Michael Jackson is. They're the art. They're the real artists. They're the. Uh, that's what Freddie Mercury. The list of artists of dog Virgo is crazy, crazy. Uh, and they tend to be. They tend to be child stars. Lots of child stars are dog Virgo. River Phoenix also, um, Michael Jackson of course. Uh, Leanne Rhymes also dog Virgo. Um, then the one afterwards, um, Boar Virgo. They tend to be interior designers. They are artistic, but uh, I think dog Virgo. I think you're right. Ninety four. Okay. Anyway, yeah. now I've got that out of my system. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, she, no. She's um, my mom was absolutely amazing with it. Like when she when because my mom is very much like mom's a teacher. Like she 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 runs a, a Montessori school. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And she also took, she, she, I remember her like, um, um, she was working with the different charities and she could see that the, that the, 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 the real job wasn't, wasn't happening, but uh, her, her way was she literally would cook like bats of dal and sabzi and rice and mm-hmm. like slates and chalk and she would go out, you know, she you take like, cause my, my dad had, my dad had, had a, um, um, lots of different cars basically. So, and so she would take one of those big uh, vans basically and then go out. And then just be like, right, you're going to get free food if you study to the street kids. So, right. you know, so she was doing all of that. I, I, yeah, I mean, amazing. She's, in, you know, incredibly tough, perfectionist, charismatic, like crazy. What's her day? Um, what are her signs? Do you know? Libra. She's, she's Libra in, in the lunar. I mean, in, in, in. so snake, snake Libra. Yeah. That's, they're, so this is, what, this is what Gandhi was. Do you see? This is so they're tough. They're harsh. They they can be controlling, but they're very giving as well at the same time. This is a this is a. I'll send you this chart as well. I won't say it on here. Have a look at have a look at the Snake Libra chart. It will make a lot right. of sense to you. It will make a lot of sense to I you. I bet. I love all this. All it's just so fascinating. It's like <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, why shouldn't it? I mean, if you think about it, it's like I I sometimes believe that we're in such a kind of supercomputer type. Um, setting i feel you know what i mean like so there is i feel there's an al- alignment with, with absolutely everything you know yeah there is um, there is there's look at the um the famous i always use this as an example look at look at jk rowling who's a snake leo hundreds and hundreds of boys to find a harry, harry potter daniel radcliffe snake leo is that same chart 144 charts remember that there's a lot of charts 
and that she chose yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And think think about the snake symbolism of Harry Potter, and then the, the lion symbolism in Harry Potter as well. So how, yeah. how relevant that was. Then if you look at someone like like, did you ever watch that TV show Dawson's Creek? I love that show. No, I, I saw some of it. I had a massive crush on what's his name, Jonathan. Um, was it is it the, the, the main guy? Uh, James Van Der Beek. James, yeah, James Van Der Beek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the guy who wrote it uh, was Kevin Williamson, who's a snake Pisces. Hundreds and hundreds of boys to find a Dawson who's based on himself. James Van Der Beek's also a snake Pisces. This sort of stuff happens again and again. I, I, I've got like, in the first book I wrote is like, there's so many stories like that in there. Amazing. What's your, what's your, book, what your, book, your book called? It's called Secrets of the Command Astrology. It's just here. Amazing. Love it. This is my first book. This is probably a bit messy. This, is one of, this might be the very first one. No, this isn't. This is my first book. This might be. This is the, the awesome. 144 charts in there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm going to uh-huh. send you just your individual charts. So it's like the, you'll get, it's got more. So basically, if you buy a sheep Libra on Amazon, it's like 6 99 This is 21 pounds or uh, 30 pounds officially, but you can get it for 21 pounds online. So if you want yeah. all the charts, get this one. If you just want your own chart, I'm going to send it to you anyway for free. So, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a perk of a, uh, doing an interview with me you get your chart for free oh yay <laughs> <laughs> there's 12 interviews i'm getting <laughs> you want them all yeah <laughs> cool. oh it just fell yeah, down yeah, yeah. Yeah. so all right cool uh the other questions how did you find love when did you guys meet and stuff what's the story there love okay 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 okay, okay. okay. this is okay you're gonna love this one right yeah i love it already so, okay ready <laughs> Yep. Okay, ready. So, oh, um, there you are. So, um, 25th of June, 2009, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson died, right? So, I had been dating this guy, um, half Spanish, half German, lovely chap, had issues. Anyway, just, um, anyway, so it wasn't working, and I broke up with him uh, about a month before, and I was, uh, I, I don't know whether you know, I was meant to dance for Michael Jackson for a uh, year two. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, so that day I was, um, I've, I've been with this lovely actor called Amanda Redman, who runs a great school, full artist theatre school. Um, then I was there, and we, it was like the school show, and um, and then we heard the news that Michael had died. Anyway, um, I went back to my friend's house, um, and you know, was uh, called my parents, and my mom was just like, "Oh, bad things happened to you, all of that," you know, that, like. I told you this was going to happen. How could you possibly know? Anyway, it was not, not, not a very good space. But anyway, I um, got a text from this guy that I had been seeing. And he was like, just, you know, like, I hope you're okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And then he started saying all these nasty stuff about Michael. And I was like, I said, you can believe what you believe. But, um, you know, like he was kind of my, one of my heroes when I was growing up. So, and his body's still warm. So just back off for a little bit, okay? Like, I don't, I'm not in the space to hear all this. Mm. And he wrote, wrote back to me and said, Mom, you just care about your duet and all that. You know, and I just went, oh, really? Like, that's what you're going to talk to me? Anyway, um, long story short, I just went, I don't want this type of person in my life. I don't want this. I don't want to love. I, mean, I, did, I did have feelings for this person and I, we broke up. I was like, I, this is not the kind of person I see in dating anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I went to bed that night and I went, what, who do I... What do I want in someone? And I kept saying this. This is so important. I kept saying, I want someone who's lovely. I kept saying that lovely, you know, because I was just feeling so lonely and so awful that night, you know, like, mm-hmm. someone who's lovely. And I kept saying that and I just felt this hug around me, like, because mm-hmm. I, I gave myself that hug. And I, went, oh, and I kept saying to someone who I couldn't introduce to my, you know, my parents or, you know, just this, just kept saying that, you know. Anyway, cut to, this was 25th of June, right? Cut to August, I'm at the Gilgood Theatre. I kind of forgot what, what was playing. Um, we're at the, at the Gilgood Bar and um, I noticed somebody, you know, um, and I, we, we sort of, I, our eyes kind of met. And uh, then we later on, I think a lot of people went to you know, Rupert Street, which is right next to mm-hmm. uh, the Gilgood, so we're at Rupert Street. Anyway, I'm talking, 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 talking. And then I just feel this eye, and I'm like, and I turn around, and it was, I just saw his eyes, I was just really drawn to his eyes. And I just sort of went up and introduced myself and started talking to the, and um, I, I was meant to go to sing at this uh, jazz cabaret gig, and, and well, long story short, didn't, that didn't end up happening. We just, anyway, 
went back to his to his uh, he was staying in his lovely hotel and um he played this amazing like very because i grew up watching a lot of these um um not just musicals but um you know like um how do i say very he had a very retro taste in music let's just say mm-hmm. that like very retro taste which is very very my taste as well so it was already lovely and we all took you know um we were just dating just dating 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 and then um he asked me to marry him and um so we got married on may 23rd right which what year? um what yeah uh 2010 ah uh-huh. right right and then he said because um we had to do the so we did an indian wedding we did, we, did, we you know on on may 20 you know like the the full you know and um but the 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 sign read just because we lived in crystal palace at the time um they were like um the only the only date that we have uh that you can get married in brixton town hall is 25th of june so 25th of june 2009 i said i don't want this i want this mm-hmm. and 25th of june 2010 i am signing on the dotted line wow. oh it's gone off yeah you know so i'm signing on the dotted line now wait things get really so that so so that particular day we we, we didn't do cuz we already had the big party we just had a very small thing you know we went to the thing we uh, we had to our two best men and we just you know did the sign and everything and it was lovely and then we we drove that night to another friend's wedding right and it was um i can't remember what where it, where it was but anyway we got there and it was a beautiful beach big full moon in the sky and john's like do you want to go to a, like a really nice restaurant and i was like you know what no i just want to have um we were both not vegan uh, then i i just said you know let's just have some fish and chips and um we sat on the beach having these fish and chips and like a glass of prosecco i don't know anyway so i'm like oh this is lovely someone's phone went off and guess what the tune was that was in it man in the mirror Oh my god wow wow crazy Amazing. right yeah so i was like okay now you're just talking to me just showing up yeah so things like that i don't know like yeah. i mean for me it was it was uh, you know and uh, you know the song nature boy uh you know the, you know the, song, the, the song nature boy by nat king Cole, but, um, no uh, i don't know it. no so the, you know, there was a boy a very strange oh yes yes i know that boy. i know that song yeah yeah the end of the song is the, the greatest thing yeah So it's to be lo- loved and to be loved in return, return, right? That one, isn't it? Voila, exactly. And I think that's one of the things with a relationship is, is how you find love. Is once I le- learned how to love myself, mm-hmm. you know, um, that manifested, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and yeah, you know, he said, we've been married 10 years. We've celebrated 10 years this, this, this year. So wow, well, congratulations, man. I'm very lucky. He's very, yeah. very, very wonderful. Congratulations. What's up with my PTSD and... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, when is when is this finished? Tell me his uh, the his uh, date of birth. Is funny. I know, but I just thought let's just carry on. It's fine. fine. Uh, uh, at least people can hear the audio at least. It's Gemini. Gemini. So it is Gemini. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if it was 3rd of June or 3rd of uh, um, uh, April. So okay. So Gemini and snake. Chinese year of the snake is similar to your mum astrologically. You know how you see how you and I are sibling signs because we we are both sheep but then air sign yeah. attached. Your mum is yeah. a snake sign with a with the air sign attached. He is a snake sign with the air sign attached. So it's it's similar. It's not not the same, but it's similar chart. What are, uh, what are your plans for the future? What are you working on now? So I this year the for me this year I'm just um focusing on healing and stabilizing really um for myself, you know, because I've been functioning all this time on a sort of very high functioning CPTSD. Mm-hmm. you know and i'm like if i really want i'm sort of a very strong reward system very strong fight or flight so for me it's like focusing on restabilizing and um and teaching teaching and choreographing you know um uh, just really enjoying that like i'm i'm i've created this um this way of um you know uh, i'm using folkloric dance uh, uh dances basically and you frozen Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. you're there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I've, yeah. I've just created a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've created a, a, a like you know I do this thing called dance with ash and um I've just created a um an online um thing that oh, you know where people meet every every Saturday. Uh it's like a little dance community. So thank you so much for coming on my my podcast. Uh people can find you okay. at dance with ash. Yeah. And um yes. And you know what come back and let's have another chat soon and let's I'll have like a, a specific themes or something like that. And if you're down in London, give me a message. Let's uh, meet up for a drink. Yeah, sure. 
Mm-hmm. That would be lovely. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely. I haven't, you haven't ventured out in London yet, but but when I do, that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, cool. This has been so lovely. Yeah, Thank it's you. So yeah, it's been really, really wonderful and and and, and, and healing experiences. You know, I'm all about healing experiences, healing connections, healing connections. Absolutely. So yeah, thank absolutely. you. All right. Thank all you right. so much for coming. Thank you. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. Take care.